Welcome. I'm Kinetic Symphony. I hunt down and report on weird and true mysterious stories, from glitches to the paranormal. Would you like even more content? Here's my Patreon, now onto the stories. This is my channel's monthly compendium, for the month of February, 2023. Case file number 957, written by Germs and Life. Disney World duplicated my son. My wife and I took our family on a trip to Disney World in Florida. Always wanted to go, but for one reason or another, we never had the time or money. Things can change for the better. We were having a great time, enjoying the rides and the sights. My son loved the new Star Wars Resistance experience. We were walking in between rides, heading over to the bathroom as my son and I really had to pee. My wife rarely needs to go, which I've always found suspicious. My 10-year-old son, who was standing next to my wife and I, suddenly cried out from the bathroom. We all heard it, including my son, who for sure had the most confused expression on his face from the lot of us. It was his voice, unmistakably so. I went inside the bathroom, it had eight stalls, and I saw my son, who was outside, still with my wife, enter the stall at the far end, the last one, and close it. I saw his little Star Wars sneakers below the stall level. Before I went to the stall, I peeked back outside and my son was still there, being held tight by my wife. She shouted, Who was it? I didn't even know what to say. I held up my finger so as to indicate, Give me a moment here. Went back inside the bathroom, to the final stall, and knocked. No answer. Did a quick look under. No one in that stall. Only one man, I presume, in the bathroom besides myself, who was in the first stall near to the door. That was my son. He cried out to us from the bathroom. Couldn't make out the words, garbled and brief. I saw him as I first came in. Not his full face, but his exact clothing, height, hair color, and of course his shoes. I have no words. I couldn't explain anything, especially now that there was no kid in the bathroom at all. It's not explainable by saying it was a kid that looked like my son because no one's here. I told my wife and kid it was nothing, just a man having a rough time. I did go in with my son at the same time after, since we still had to pee. I'll never forget this. Case file number 958, written by, praised by son. Command the universe, it'll listen. I've always been a nervous person, and I've always found comfort in fidgeting with things. It helps me focus my silly, overactive brain. Not exactly to calm it down, but oriented towards what I wanted to do, without getting distracted or procrastinating. So a friend of mine made me a 3D printed fidget spinner a while ago. It's been my go-to fidget toy ever since. It's lasted a long time, years. I've grown attached to it. Sentimental value, not exactly. But it was thoughtful of him. So I was sitting at my desk at work, playing with my spinner, when it fell out of my hand and landed in my lap. I could feel the light touch of it on top of my thigh, but when I went to pick it up, it wasn't there. I looked all around my lap, under my chair, on the floor too. I felt that little tap as it hit my thigh, and I felt it stay there, it never fell off my leg. I have tried to find a replacement, but it's not the same. My friend made me a new one and it's alright, but it takes a while to break it in if you know what I mean. I'm lucky to have such a great friend, let's get that straight, but I can't shake the feeling that something happened that truly wasn't supposed to have. Every single human being alive has dropped something and never found it again, that's ordinary, but not when it's touching you. If I had looked down, I'm convinced I would have seen it vanish off my thigh in real time. Case file number 959, written by Hubris Diminished 22, Two Mighty Atlases. I was living in Seattle, in a small apartment with my three cats, one of which was Atlas, a Bombay breed with dark black fur. He was my favorite. Shh, don't tell the others. I would literally have dreams about him while he's resting on my chest at night. Months ago, my shift was over and I came home to find him missing. I searched everywhere all of his usual hiding spots, above the fridge, under the couch, but honestly, he rarely hides, especially when I arrive home. My secret weapon if one of my love balls can't be found is to open a can of cat food. It never fails, 
They scurry out, practically yelling, feed me, all the way. <laughs> so I did that, but only two of my cats came out for the grub. Over the next few days, I posted flyers, asked my neighbors, and even contacted the local shelters, but there was no sign of them anywhere. I was offering a $500 reward too, and plenty of people contacted me. None of them had Atlas. Months went by. I had given up hope of ever seeing him again. Needless to say, I was devastated, and my other two cats seemed to miss him as well. Yesterday, I'm back home, about to walk up my doorstep, and he's there, sitting on the top step. I was almost crying to see him, but it's so freaky. There were two of them now, identical in every possible way, sitting there side by side. I thought I was hallucinating for a second. Same fur, same green eyes. Both atlases were behaving in the same way, eating the same food, playing with the same toys the same way, and even cuddling with me in the same way on my chest. They're absolutely adorable together, but it's left me without any real answers. So Atlas somehow escaped the house, something he'd never want to do, then found a well taken care of stray that's exactly like him. The only way I could tell them apart was the collar and tag I have on my big atlas. There was no way to know who this one belonged to, if it wasn't a stray, so I kept him. There was no microchip either. I told the lady at the local Humane Society shelter that I found this possible stray. My atlas was rescued from here, and provided a photo and my number too. If anyone comes looking for him, he's safe. But if this is the universe giving me a second lover boy, I'll take it. Case file number 960, written by the Groove Freak. The mighty pen that materialized in front of our faces. I've been experiencing difficult to explain or unexplainable, insofar as I'm able to theorize, events for much of my life. This is especially true of things that I lose or that fall into the void, as I nihilistically like to refer to it. So anyways, this happened to me just a couple months ago. My girlfriend and I were working on something together. We are both writers. I am also a musician, and we collaborate on creative ideas sometimes. We were sitting at my desk and taking down some notes, trying to outline a working plan for us to follow with this particular endeavor. We both prefer to do this the old-fashioned way and physically write things down, so I'm using a pen and literally mid-word, when I feel like I've totally forgotten my train of thought, I stop writing for a second and look up from my notepad, still holding the pen, when a few seconds later, I've realigned my thoughts and looked down to continue writing, but the pens are gone. The only other things on the table were my notepad and my girlfriend's pen and notepad. It's not a large table either. So I say, what the F, where's my pen? We take everything else off the table, now there's just nothing on it. Okay, so I suppose maybe somehow I dropped it and didn't notice it leave my hand. I look on the floor and all around the desk and of course not there, so I say, well, I guess I just fell into the void, because things like this happen relatively often, though most can be rationalized away and ignored, because of that sliver of uncertainty and the unreliability of human senses and memory. What we do next is move the table over a couple feet in case the pen had not only fallen from my hand and onto the floor without my feeling it or producing any audible noise, but also rolled in such a way as to be perfectly hidden under one of the legs of the table this also wasn't the case, got on our knees looking more floor level all around for it. This is when it happened. As we are both facing each other right between us, we both watch as the pen just, and I can't stress this enough, appears. Literally materializes in mid-air in the space between us and proceeds to fall to the floor. Naturally, we were both stunned for a moment and totally speechless, but given the mild frequency that unexplainable crap has happened to us both, coupled with the fact that we are also already inclined towards contemplating and discussing esoteric and abstract hypothetical concepts, perhaps we were slightly more equipped than others to accept this kind of almost unbelievable event. Of course, I'd be skeptical too if it were anyone besides myself, or even if it were me without someone else to corroborate, but it definitely happened, and we both saw it. Case file number 961, written by Last Queen 86. My daughter vanished at the theater. My daughter and I went to the theater. After the movie ended, we went to the restroom. I went inside the stall first, and in the meantime, she went to another. 
When I was done, I washed my hands, dried them, and my daughter was there with me and we walked out. By the time we came closer to the exit, I noticed she wasn't there next to me anymore. I looked around and she was gone. I went outside to wait for her. I thought maybe she lost something or forgot something. After a couple minutes, I called her and asked her where she was. She said, I just got out of the bathroom and I'm waiting for you. I told her that I'm outside and when she came outside, I asked her why she turned around and it came out that she was never with me. She did actually not walk out with me. She also did not see me when she got out of her stall. This is so crazy because I remember looking at her when I left the bathroom and she opened the door for me. Bonus file written by Willem James Huff, my childhood comforter, the disembodied arm. My biological dad and mom are now divorced, but before that, they lived in the same trailer and would often fight after I had gone to bed. My bed was against the outside wall of the trailer, and I have distinct memories of an arm that would sometimes come out of the gap between the bed and the wall and pat me reassuringly on the head and shoulder while they argued. What's especially weird is that I do not remember there being any more to it than an arm with a hand, and I don't remember ever trying to see if there was any more to this person. All I remember about the arm was that it was completely white, and the fingernails were long. It felt perfectly reasonable to me at the time, to just accept that an arm came out of the gap besides the bed. A few days ago, the memory resurfaced and I had a moment of cognitive dissonance. Like, wait, what? A hand? Between the bed and wall? That's weird. Why did I not think that was weird before? I asked my mom about it and she said she does vaguely remember me telling her about that as a kid, that it creeped her out at the time but that she chalked it up to a weird kid brain and it never came up again. Anyway, I have no explanation for this but thought it might be worth sharing here. Case file number 962, written by Cooler O'Connor. Infinite potato and cheese quesadillas. Here I go. My name is Padraig O'Connor, Mexican, 39 male. I have two stories to share. The first one occurred when I was about seven years old. I was visiting relatives with my parents. I was hungry and my aunt took me to the kitchen. A very small kitchen, by the way. She made me two cheese potato quesadillas and then walked away into the living room. I was able to see them all from my chair. They had a very small kitchen. When I finished eating, I turned to my left side to pet the dog. And when I looked back at my plate, I saw two quesadillas on my plate, like I never ate them. I was like, what the F? No one else in my kitchen besides the dog and myself. I could see both my parents, my uncle and aunt chatting in the living room. There was no way my aunt could go back to the kitchen, prepare two more quesadillas, and serve them to me in mere seconds without me noticing her. Anyways, I ate them both again, now, on purpose. I turned my head looking to the opposite side, looked down to my plate and again, what do you know? Two more potato cheese quesadillas on my plate again. I did repeat the process about four times, getting two every time until they stopped materializing somehow. Until this day, I can't explain it and when I walked into the living room to tell my parents, they of course did not believe me and honestly, I can't blame them. My second glitch happened not that long ago. I live in Mexico. My mom is from the US. In 2019, I was visiting my mom in San Antonio, Texas. Whenever I visit her, it's for a few months. I do work from home, any home office, so I can do these things. <laughs> Back to the story. When I am in Texas, I have not much to do. After turning off my computer for the day, I just watch movies or series. I don't remember on whatever streaming platform because I haven't watched live TV for years. I am almost positive it was Netflix, but anyway, I saw a movie titled Called. I like these kinds of animated movies, but the characters and premise of the story seemed interesting to me, so I watched it. It was around October 2019. Nice, entertaining movie. And in March 2020, I saw an ad announcing that movie with a due date to be released in theaters. I was like, what? I saw this at home months ago last year. Is it the sequel? But the premise and scenes looked exactly the same as what I saw months ago. I went to see it when it came out and it was just as I remember back in October 2019, more or less. Thinking logically, I thought maybe it was an early on stream or early release or something, but I remember Disney Plus wasn't available around that time since it was launched in November 2019. 
and it is a Disney movie, so it couldn't be anywhere else, I think. I thought maybe it was a test trial, maybe, since back then the virus was a huge thing and movie theaters were hit hard. That could explain it? I did research to see if that or any other movie got previous releases on streaming platforms before theaters, which makes sense, but it is a logical possibility that could explain it. So if you or anyone in your audience can explain it, or maybe experience the same thing, I would like to hear about it. Case file number 963, written by Bittersweet0208, The Man Outside of Time. The glitch happens at the end of the story, but the build-up to it was quite strange, so bear with me please. This happened just before Christmas 2019, and I guess it popped into my mind again recently due to it being Christmas season. So in December 2019, I was traveling by train back to my hometown. When I arrived at the train platform, I started walking towards the ticket machines. As I approached, there was an attendant standing by the machines. As soon as he turned and saw me, he loudly said to me, Well, finally you're here. I've been waiting 30 years for you to show up. I thought that was a very weird thing to say, especially since I was only 21 at the time. At a guess, the attendant was in his 50s. The way he said it was very happy and sincere, not sarcastic or even in a joking tone. Unfortunately, I was very shy and awkward, so I didn't ask what he meant. Wish now that I had. Then he asked if he could help me with anything, so I asked him to help me buy a ticket, as I had never used the ticket machines before. As I was buying the ticket, he kept making really intense eye contact and looking at my face as if he recognized me and was trying to figure out if I was who he thought I was. I had only moved to the area three months before and had no family there, so he couldn't have mistaken me for an older relative of mine. I had definitely never seen him before, and it was my first time taking the train. Throughout the interaction, he asked me, Are you going on another business trip? Again, I was confused because I was clearly a 21-year-old student, not a businesswoman. I feel I should say he wasn't creepy at all and definitely wasn't hitting on me. He was well-spoken and clearly not intoxicated. So here's a glitch. After I bought my ticket, he picked up my suitcase and walked me to the train, which was very kind of him. I stepped into the train, he placed my suitcase next to me, I turned to thank him, and he was gone. It was like as soon as he let go of my suitcase, he vanished into thin air. There was practically no one else around, so he didn't disappear into a crowd or anything. I glanced all around and couldn't see him anywhere. He definitely did not get on the train with me, and he wasn't anywhere on the platform. If he had to run off, I would have heard his footsteps, and it wasn't enough time for him to disappear from sight, even if he was running. The whole situation felt so strange. Not paranormal exactly, but surreal. Maybe I should mention that even though I was in university, I've never been drunk or tried any mind-altering substances, and wasn't sleep-deprived. I say this because there wasn't any easy explanation, such as me imagining him disappearing. Any theories on what it could have been? He seemed to recognize me, and I think that maybe I was someone from his past. So maybe some kind of time slip. I don't know. Case fall number 964, written by 123 away 567 Gordon, the man trapped between two worlds. So, around 11 years ago, I was a telecoms engineer. The normal day consisted of going to a few residential houses, either fitted or fixed phone lines. Everything was no different from any other day, but then I downloaded my next job and I got a 20 line installation. Now, this is not the norm for the role I had as these tasks usually went to other teams. No issues, I thought it would be nice to be somewhere for longer than an hour or two, then here, then there and everywhere. I called the contact center who told me that either the caretaker or manager of the building is aware and will explain what is required. So I arrived, and it's a really old building built in the 1920s, I later found out. I make my way in with the tester and tool bag as is the norm, and after speaking with the receptionist, I discovered that the building was at one point a nursing home, and after being derelict for a few years, it's now being used as offices for various businesses. As promised, two managers arrive and tell me that they think what I'm looking for is in the cellar, and there are a lot of cables down there and that's all they know, so I asked if the caretaker is around, as they usually know these types of things. 
I was told that he wasn't as he was ill, but due back the next day. I follow this man and woman to a numbered padlock door. They open it up, tell me the code and on the other side of the door is a stairwell that just leads down to the cellar. So as we get down there, the light is poor, like really poor. I have no chance of working like this. I mean, there were lights, yes, but you're talking pendant lights that weren't great. Understanding this, the woman tells me that they have hanging lights, so no issues. I go back to the van, grab an extension, and head back towards the cellar. So I am passing the receptionist and she just asked, Are you going to be in the cellar on your own? So I just replied, Yeah, sometimes you have to, but if what I'm looking for isn't there, I won't be for long. She laughed but told me, Rather you than me, nobody likes going down there, even for storage space. Now I'll be honest, I just thought people don't like stairs to a dark place, no worries but not something I'm unfamiliar with, so it just needs done. After a quick look around with the mail manager, we found a socket. I sort the lights out and yep, there is a DP I'm looking for, but it's an old solar block, not good for broadband. So I let him know that this is going to take a bit longer, and this is even before knowing where these 20 lines need to go. He just agrees and shows me where the office fitters have left all the cables for the clients, which to my relief is in the cupboard behind the receptionist. So all set, knowing what I know, I crack on. So I'm testing all the lines and it's going well. I have more than half going to the cabinet and a few shy, but I know the area and know from there I can get them through as it's got two 200 pair cables that run through it. At this point, it's around 4 o'clock. I don't have the blocks I need on the van, so I tag up the cables and turn off all the lights on my way out before closing and locking the door. I sign out and tell the girl at the desk, I'll see her tomorrow and leave. On my way home, I called my manager to tell them the script and that I may need a hand for half a day or more as I'm not even sure anything has been done in the exchange. The next day at 8am, I get a call from one of the other lads who tells me he is with me all day and that's all he knows. We sort out a roll each. I'll push the pairs from the box to the cab. You do the cab and exchange if needed. And then it's just a case of fitting the box and running a large internal cable from the box to behind the receptionist. I make my way into the building once again, open the door with the code, and to my surprise, all the lights are on. Now I'm 100% sure I turned them off. So I'm guessing one of the managers may have come to check if I was still there and left them on by mistake. I go down and do what I need to do, leave to push through the cables outside, call my mate and he's getting them one by one, so it's going well. I finish up and head back to fit the block. So I grab the blocks, drill all the bits, etc, etc, set up the mark for the pilot holes and just hear, what are you doing? After nearly jumping out of my skin, I turn and see this man with grey overalls on. So I say I'm just doing what's been asked, are you the caretaker? He replies that he is and says that nobody has been down here for years and is surprised that I'm there. So I just cracked on, did the drilling, etc. And then as soon as I'd stopped with the drill and it was quieter, this guy just started chatting away. What football team do you support? Do you mind if I watch what you're doing? I told him no worries and just tried to be as polite as I could. He then told me that his name was Gordon and he had been working there for over 30 years. A bit confused, recalling what the receptionist had said, I told him I was under the impression that this place had been empty for a few years and looking at the cabling it's not been updated for at least 15 to 20 years. He just said that things are always happening here. After about an hour of back and forth while I'm working, I hear a hello from the top of the stairwell, expecting Gordon to answer it. I didn't. Then it came again so I turned around. Gordon was gone. Now I'm thinking, I've been waffling on for 10 minutes and he's not even there. I pop up and it's one of the managers asking if I'm expecting somebody, another engineer. So I apologize and I explain the phone signal isn't very good down there so he probably hasn't been able to get a hold of me. All cleared, he comes down. We chat for 5 and he tells me that he will start at the receptionist and work for me while I finish. A quick toilet break and I go back down. I'm in the final stages now. I'm just putting phone numbers to pairs as for when my mate gets there, we can connect the test and go. As I'm doing this, I hear, sorry about that. Again, out of nowhere, it's Gordon. So I just acknowledged him. 
They call him clever and make a joke that if they can't find you, they can't ask you to do anything. I continue for five minutes, and I've done all I can, so I tell him I'm just heading up to assist my mate, and we will be done soon and out of the way. Gordon then told me he liked the company, and it was nice to talk with me. I felt saddened at this point, thinking he was maybe treated poorly by people in the building, so I just said, of course mate, it costs nothing to be nice and have a chat. So I go up the stairs leaving Gordon down there, and help get the cable through a void and into the cellar. 10-20 minutes of trying to fish it through, and we got it. We went down, Gordon was not around, and we finished. My mate tells me it's time for food. He will go to the chippy and meet me back at the yard as I tell him I just need a few signatures and to make sure the lights go back so I can get my extension lead. I get what I need from the manager's signatures and show him where the link is behind the reception. Inform him that I need to get my extension lead, so are the lights okay there for now, or does he want me to move them? He states that they might as well stay for now and he will get another lead in case anybody else needs to go down there. I head down and start unplugging the lights, and Gordon appears again telling me he didn't realize the lights were mine as he wouldn't have touched them. Straight away I thought, ah, so that's why they were on this morning. But then it dawned on me, the door, it was locked. I asked if he had come down yesterday evening, and he said, yes of course, I'm always here, it's where I'm needed. Confused and just wanting to disappear at this point, I said, no worries, nice to meet you. I placed my hand in front and put it to shake his, and he just raised his hand and said, hope to see you soon. So I signed out, thinking nothing of it. Then a week goes by and I get a call from our control asking if I can return to this address as one of the lines isn't working and it's high level. So I say yep, no worries. I get there and say hello again to the receptionist. I asked if I could just check behind her first before having to go into the cellar. With some joy, it is there. It's just not a bit proper. As I'm sorting, there's an older guy. He asked me if I was the one who was here last week. He apologized and stated that he was the caretaker and he had to take more days off than planned. I just told him, oh, don't worry about it. I'm sure Gordon will tell you where everything is. As soon as I said this, he just looked me dead in the eyes and said, what did you just say? So I said, Gordon, he told me he's the caretaker here. This guy went white and just asked me if we could talk outside, so I followed. He simply asked me if I believed in ghosts, then told me that before this was what it is today, it was a nursing home, and the old caretaker was a man called Gordon. He knew this as when the building was taken over, he found an old desk with to-do lists, letters and requests for a Gordon, and there was a sign on the door which said caretaker, and where this desk was, the door led to the cellar. I immediately rubbished this idea and started laughing, thinking he and his mate were pulling my leg. He then asked me if he was wearing overalls, which I replied he was. He just looked me dead in the eye and said, listen mate, I'm not lying. Gordon passed away years ago, supposedly on the job. I just thought you should know as it's not something that's been considered funny, telling me he has been mocked as he has also seen Gordon, but people just have never believed him. I never said a thing to anybody beyond that until one night fishing with a friend and just like that he said he thought I was taking the piss. I know what I saw. I know what I heard. I don't tell this to anybody as it's not worth the ridicule. Hence why I'm using a throwaway account. Ghosts or spirits are very real. Case file number 965 written by Independent Ad 6246. The mysterious penny that defies physics. As this literally just happened five minutes ago, I'm trying to rack my brain for any logical or scientific theory, just sitting on my bed watching YouTube, and at the foot of my bed I hear what sounds like a coin dropping onto my glass vintage makeup tray and mirror. It made me jump as it made a loud clang. It made the noise of hitting glass and then rolling a bit, sounded like it dropped from a pretty high vantage point. I went over to check and there was a penny laying there, very dusty as well. The items on my makeup mirror are just makeup brushes in a cup and claw clips laying flat down. Directly above that is just my ceiling. No holes or random gaps or openings. My makeup tray is just laying flat on a small wooden table. I don't have money stored in a container anywhere near that. I cannot think of a logical explanation for why a random penny just decided to drop from god knows where and scare the crap out of me. 
Case file number 966, written by Gross and Anonymous. Nothing better than free milk. It was just an ordinary day, and I decided to make myself a cup of tea. Five plus per day, usually chamomile. I took the milk out of the fridge and poured some into my cup, about two tablespoons usually. I put the milk back in the fridge and went to do something else. But then the doorbell rang and I went to answer it. When I came back to get my cup of tea, I noticed the milk was besides my cup. I thought it was a little odd. I clearly remember putting it away. It's habit. Maybe I'd been distracted by the door and had to put it down instead of putting it away. So I took the milk and put it back in the fridge. But when I opened the door, I saw that there was already a carton of milk inside, the same brand and type, silk, almond, unsweetened. I was confused because I was sure we had only bought one carton and I only do grocery shopping once a week. I took the milk out and compared them. They were both identical, including in the amount that was left inside, as much as I could compare them going by weight in my hands. I got an extra carton of milk from the grace of the gods. Case file number 967, written by Brunette Nymphs for Life, my unbreakable shirt. I've been playing soccer with my buddies for years now. We're not training to be professionals or anything, we just love the sport and enjoy playing it. We take it seriously when we're on the field though, and we always give it our all. One day, during a particularly intense game with some elbows flying, things got heated between me and one of my teammates, Brady. He's the biggest dude in our group, standing at over 6 foot 5 and probably over 250 pounds, never asked him his exact weight. He can be pretty intimidating on the field. I made a pass under him to one of my other teammates and he got annoyed, grabbing my shirt shoulder. At that moment, I felt the fibers of my shirt rip apart under his grip. I looked up at him in surprise as he rarely gets physical. Here's the nuttiest thing. When I looked down, my shirt was perfectly intact, not a tear in sight. Brady looked at my shirt, then started to squint as if he couldn't see what his mind had pre-programmed was going to be there, a torn up shirt arm. I asked Brady if he had felt the shirt rip too and he said in his gruffy voice, Frick yeah, you fixed it or is it double layered or something? I just said no, weird. I got nothing, but I'm glad my shirt wasn't all torn up. I seriously felt the fibers ripping. Case file number 968, written by Built on Teeth, the tooth that returned. Over a decade ago, when I was a teenager, I was playing baseball in the school field. I was a small boy, but I was fast as lightning. It was a normal game, nothing out of the ordinary. But during one play, there was a missed throw that ended up hitting me square in the jaw. I felt intense pain and knew something was wrong. I was rushed to the hospital and it was determined that my jaw had been cracked and one of my molar teeth had been taken out completely. It was fractured and wrist infection. It was an annoying and painful experience, but I had to live with it. I got used to having a missing tooth and it didn't affect my daily life too much besides being a little awkward and chewing some foods. But today, I'm 24 now. I woke up and as I was brushing my teeth, I realized that my missing molar was back. The whole thing. I kept playing with it with my fingers, by playing I just mean feeling around it. It felt normal, like any other tooth, no cracks in it. The F? I'm not going mad because I asked everyone if they remembered the accident and how I had my molar taken out. Everyone remembered. They didn't believe me when I told them it was back in my gum line, until I showed them by opening my mouth like I was trying to swallow their faces. My parents though, they thought I had bought a fake tooth off of Amazon to prank them. I told them to touch it but they passed. I don't think they'll ever believe me. Which is fine. Can entire teeth grow back overnight after being removed? Case file number 969, written by I am Nettie 2300 Security footage from another universe. I'm not sure how to characterize this story since I have no clue if it was a glitch or not or something paranormal, but you guys can judge it instead and thanks in advance. Some background details first. A few months ago, I went to drop off my husband at the bus stop because he woke up late to go to work. So we both got ready in a rush and when we were about to head out, he, d he usually does it without a problem, plus it was still dark and I'm sure there are no squirrels around at that time anyway. 
When my dog gets out of the car, he sees a skunk and runs after it. I started yelling his name to come back and it only took him a couple of seconds to return because the skunk did his part on spraying his face with that nasty smelling oily fluid. My dog came back with one eye open and the other one closed and with excessive saliva all over his mouth. When I see this and I sort of rushed him inside so I can bathe him and take all the stinky smell off his face, with no luck of course. And on the other hand, my husband doesn't stop calling my cell phone, but I am unable to answer because I'm busy rushing lots of water on my dog's face. I was literally in the shower with him. When I finally finished bathing him, he called again and I finally answered. And he said he's on his way back home because he saw me coming inside the house without the dog. So he assumed that our dog got lost. My husband tells me that at first he thought that I may have come back inside to grab my phone because I left it behind or something or to get the leash for Rio, but he never saw me coming back out, so he assumed the worst. I told him after, what are you talking about? Rio came back and I just finished bathing him, and that's the reason why I haven't answered the phone. My husband then tells me that it's not possible because in the Ring app camera, there is no sign of our dog coming inside or near the house with me. My husband has a tendency to always check the Ring app to make sure we made it home okay, by the way. Anyway, Daniel, my husband, kept arguing that it was not possible, that he was coming back to try to help me find him. Note, my husband is not a believer of anything paranormal or anything that is tied to it. He brushes off everything that is not explainable or tends to not question things like this. Anyway, I then explained to him that when Rio was making his way back inside the house with me, he was running a bit right next to me, semi ahead. Then I told him to go to work because we were okay and so he did. Afterwards, I started to think about what my husband meant by not seeing him on the Ring app. So I went to the camera recording history in the app and yep, Rio is seen running out but never coming back. I came out calling his name and jogging back inside on my own as if I was by myself. I know you're probably thinking maybe a camera glitch and that it was dark but everything is pretty clear in the camera. And Rio was not able to rush or run fast either because he couldn't see clearly due to the skunk spraying his face. I swear my dog was next to me jogging back inside the house, but Ring does not show it. How? I felt lost in my head and thought that maybe I imagined it all, but how? I never went back outside. Rio was next and ahead of me and I could see him at that very moment. I did see him, I swear it. I also have the video and will be sharing it as well. Also, after I get inside the house, you can hear me arguing with Rio a bit in the video. I know, who argues with their dog, right? But I was just nervous, so don't judge me. I have shown the video to my friends and some family members and they think the camera was just being glitchy. Ugh, but why do I see myself then? What do you guys think? Any feedback is appreciated. Case file number 970, written by MousyBoy666, my self-cleaning bedroom. I usually work from 5pm to 2am, so my sleep schedule was a bit shifted from the average person's. Last week I overslept, so I didn't have time to do anything before getting ready for work. While getting dressed, I realized my room was a mess and I needed to be picked up. I told myself I'd do it tomorrow before work. My shift goes completely normally, but when I come home, my room is completely picked up. My small trash can has been emptied, laundry has been organized, and my bed was made. The weirdest part was that my bed was made differently than how I usually make it. Pillow arrangement, etc. I go to my roommate's bedroom to see if she's still awake. She is, so I asked if she cleaned my room for me. She says no, and that's why I was asking. And I tell her that someone must have because it was messy when I left and now it's clean. She comes with me to see for herself and my room looks exactly the way it did before I left for work. Back to the mess. She asked me if I was joking and I didn't even know what to say. She thinks I might have hallucinated it from being tired from work, but I slept a solid 10 hours and was only at work for 8. I felt perfectly fine. A very bizarre incident. Case file number 971, written by Daughter of Israel. I was stalked by a feline imposter. When I was 17 years old, I had a series of very strange encounters with what I thought at the time was a stray cat. Now I'm not so sure. 
So the first time I encountered this cat, it was just a normal school day. I was exiting the school bus and getting ready to walk home. When my attention was drawn to a small figure moving in the distance, I'd say about 50 feet away. It was a cat, for all intents and purposes, but it was very strange in appearance. It had an extremely long, extremely skinny neck and a relatively small head in comparison to its body, which was the size of a normal cat. Initially I thought, poor thing, it must have been hurt really badly and now it's deformed. Weirdly enough though, as I was staring at it, I suddenly started to experience a fear that I can't quite explain. I couldn't figure out why exactly I was afraid, but I started to notice that this cat was staring back at me too, very intently. Now I'm aware that all cats stare, but this thing was looking at me in a way that I only know how to describe as human-like, calculating even. It felt quite sinister. This couldn't have lasted any more than two minutes, but I was so terrified that my heart was racing and I was shaking. I began to panic a little and started to walk towards my home, backwards, because I wanted to keep my eyes on it. Something in my head told me that it would follow me, which it did. As I got closer to our townhouse, I'd say that it was about 500 feet away from the bus stop. I just took out running. Sure enough, it ran after me. But, for whatever reason, it kept a healthy distance between us and didn't fully catch up with me. Which it definitely could have because it was unusually fast. Honestly, it just seemed to be toying with me. It maintained direct, unwavering eye contact with me the entire time. After I was finally able to get my key in the lock, as I was shaking so hard, I burst through the door and slammed it behind me. I took a couple of deep breaths and looked out the window next to the door. The cat was standing just outside the window, staring at me. From that point on, for about two weeks, this cat would randomly show up and torment me. Sometimes it would stalk me home. Other times I'd be in my room and a strange feeling would come over me. I'd get up from my bed and go to the window to see the cat staring up at me from outside. My room was on the second floor of our townhouse. It would literally be outside, perched in the middle of the driveway, staring up into my room. So one weekend, my parents had gone out of town with my baby brother, and I had the place to myself. I remember this was on a Saturday. I had slept in and was just happy to have a lazy day. After I got up, brushed my teeth and face, I went back into my room and that same feeling overcame me. I went to the window and the cat was there. At this point, I was beyond disturbed, so I decided to go downstairs, because even though the cat was outside, it's like I could feel its gaze through the brick and mortar. I walked downstairs and turned the corner. The cat was now standing in the window by the front door looking at me. I quickly closed the blinds and went to the kitchen. The cat was now standing behind the glass doors that opened to the backyard, as our kitchen faced the backyard, staring at me. It took all of 10 seconds for me to walk from the front door to the kitchen. So in 10 seconds, this severely deformed looking cat raced around the townhouse, managed to scale a security fence, just to be able to stare at me from a different vantage point. At that point, I just shrugged my shoulders and decided to lay on the couch to watch TV. I was so mentally drained and seriously thought that I might be going crazy, but I knew that I wasn't. Eventually, it just stopped showing up. I still have zero clue what this thing was. It was not a cat. Cats don't monitor people. And the worst part was that I knew I couldn't tell anyone about this, as it would sound completely psychotic. The literal only person I've ever shared this with is my mom, and that's only because she actually witnessed one of the interactions too. Case file number 972, written by KS Boy D20. The Umbrella Connection. Background information. I have a best friend named Cat. Our song is Umbrella by Rihanna. I was at work today. I work in a gym. And we're really slow today. So I'm just chatting with Cat on Messenger. She sent me a screenshot of an article about a priest who had a near-death experience and says that he went to hell and demons were singing music by Rihanna. She said, I read this headline and automatically started singing Umbrella to myself. She sent another screenshot that mentions the actual song umbrella in the article. So she thought that was a funny coincidence. I finish reading the article and I type back, LOL. As I hit send, I see a woman walking towards my desk. I quickly set down my phone and said, how can I help you? This is where it gets weird. 
She looks at me and asks, Can I have an umbrella? Then she kind of looks confused, shakes her head a bit, and says, Jump rope. I need a jump rope. I'm stunned for a second and stood up and said, Yes, of course. Let me run into the back and grab that for you. I glance outside to check the weather, and it's bright and sunny. I bring him back the jump rope and hand it to her. She still looks a little dazed and says, I have no idea why I said umbrella. Weird. She then thanks me and walks back to the fitness area. I texted Kat the exchange, and we were both equally creeped out. My daughter said to post it here. What do you think happened here? Coincidence? Case file number 973, written by Wrongdoer Leading, 8029. My daughter knew I was pregnant before I did. A few years ago, when my daughter was three, I decided to go back to school and become a nurse. My husband and I were in no way trying for a baby whatsoever. I was on birth control and we were very careful. I walked into her preschool one day to find the director and her teachers telling me congratulations with big smiles on their faces. I used to work as a preschool teacher here, so a lot of these people were close friends of mine. I asked them what they're congratulating me for, and they tell me that my daughter announced to everyone that mommy has a little sister in her tummy. I laughed it off and told them all that I was sorry to disappoint them, but that just wasn't true. My daughter and I went home and talked about it. I told her mommy didn't have a baby in her tummy, and she just kept pointing at my belly and saying, yes you do, as if I were lying to her. A few days later, I woke up to someone touching my belly. My daughter has the bottom of my shirt pulled up with her head resting on my belly while she rubs it gently and says, Baby sister, what are you hiding in there? It was really sweet and I just assumed she really wanted a little sister. She had never expressed any interest in having a sibling prior to this and we never discussed it. We had the talk again and she got upset with me and told me she had seen her before and she is in there. She told me that her little sister looks different than us and has blonde hair and blue eyes with little holes in her cheeks, aka dimples. My daughter, husband and I all have very dark hair, chocolate brown eyes and no dimples. I talk to her about wanting a sibling and tell her that when I finish school we will try to give her a little brother or sister. Again, she's frustrated and yelling, I already have a sister. I was expecting my period to start within the next week, like clockwork. It didn't. I took a pregnancy test and just stared at that faint positive result for what felt like forever. I was in complete shock. I was on birth control, so I immediately called my OBGYN and they saw me the next day. It was estimated that I was 4 weeks and 6 days pregnant. I gave birth to a blonde hair, blue eyed little girl with the sweetest dimples. This experience has always blown my mind. Case file number 974, written by OK Narwhal 6221. Cross the street to reset time. Last week, I experienced a glitch in the matrix. I was coming home from seeing my best friend who visited from another state at about 3 a.m. Let's keep in mind the fact that I wasn't drunk or off of any other substance, as I've been sober for the past six months. I was waiting for the light to change to cross the street. There was a McDonald's directly across the street from me and I was looking through my phone until the light changed. I also noticed that the street was very quiet and kind of foggy, which was weird since this particular street is always active and full of people, yet at this moment it wasn't. After the light finally changed, I looked left and right to make sure no car was driving recklessly. As I was crossing the street, I tried to continue using my phone but the screen wouldn't turn on as I repeatedly tried pressing on the side button of my iPhone to turn on to the home screen. When I finally reached across the street, or what I thought was across the street, I looked up only to notice that I was back across the street I came from, this time walking perpendicular up the block from where I intended to go. I stopped in my tracks to take in what just happened, this time hearing the wind blowing and the chatter of people that usually try to sell anyone who passes by plant mass, and the cars honking their horn. I saw the McDonald's across the street just like before, and as I was walking back down to the corner to cross over to where I had just come from, I was kind of scared and confused as to what just happened. It had to be a glitch in the matrix, because I know for sure I didn't imagine what just happened. Case file number 975, written by Wanderer KL, 
From snow, he went into the void. This was in the town I'm currently living in, northern Wisconsin. December last year, after I scrounged up some change, I went out to get a soda at my local gas station. It was like any other day, I got dressed, went down our apartment stairs, and started my usual journey to the local holiday gas station for Pepsi. I still remember all of it as clearly as ever. Just as I exited our apartment and out into the alley, a man walked past me and gave me a wave. If I remember correctly, he wore a red winter jacket with a white stripe in the middle, a gray beanie and short gray hair underneath, denim jeans and black boots. I listened to music pretty much all day, so when I switched playlists and looked back up, the man was just gone, seemingly vanished. I stopped dead in my tracks, awestruck. I suck at explaining things, but I try. Like I said, he just straight up disappeared, literally gone like he was never there. I remember he was walking in the same direction as me, maybe a couple feet away. There was snow crumbling under his steps like anyone else. There was no car that picked him up. My immediate reaction was to take out my earbuds and listen. Nothing. Next, I checked to see if maybe he went behind the wooden fence. Nothing. The gate had a padlock and the snow from the blizzard on Christmas was there, no signs of the gate being opened and snow being pushed away. I looked for footprints in the snow. Nothing, only mine. And I knew for certain his shoe size was definitely bigger than mine. I was in pure confusion at this point. I looked across the street and the woman I saw walking with a camouflage jacket before the man walked past me was still there, making her way to wherever she was going. I walked briskly out of the alley and looked both ways. The man was still nowhere to be seen. I chucked it up to my imagination or something, joking to myself if he no-clipped into the back rooms. Once I got home, I told my mom and stepfather. Of course, they immediately joked saying it was a time traveler or something, but they believed me since they experienced their own share of strange happenings in their lives. Even after days, a month after, there was no mention of a disappearance on my step-uncle's police scanner. Does anyone have a logical idea of what happened? Case file number 976, written by Daughter of Israel. The traffic lights that froze the world. My mom and I had just finished shopping for groceries together, and I was driving her home. As I'm driving down this busy street, the car in front of us slows down for the upcoming red light, as one does, and I do as well pretty standard and normal. I'm now stopped behind the car in front of me, which was the first car in the line of cars that had formed at the traffic light. I had just paused a YouTube video that was in my recommended list that was playing for my mom called Black Magic to Hack the Matrix. Between the both of us, my mom and I have experienced a number of strange things throughout our lives and lately, I've been feeling prompted to look into what they could mean. With that being said, I've been researching everything from magic to aliens to time travel, you name it. So that's literally all my mom and I talk about every single day. We always joke that if anyone were ever to walk into any of our conversations, they'd think we were clinically insane. Anyways, when the algorithm recommended that specific video for me to watch earlier that day, I listened to a few minutes of it, but then decided to wait and play it on the ride home so that we could discuss it together. So, when we got in the car, I queued up the video and we listened to a good portion of it before I paused it in order for us to dissect something that the YouTuber was talking about. This is when the light turned green. I sat there, foot still on the brake, waiting for the car in front of me to accelerate, but they didn't. The car next to it, in the next lane over, didn't either. Weirdly enough, the cars in the two lanes on the opposite side of the street took off as soon as our light turned green which synced up to the traffic light on the side of the street I was driving on. I've driven down the street on either side, or from either direction if you will, several times, and the lights always turn green at the same time. So at first I thought that maybe there was something in front of the cars that I just wasn't seeing, that was preventing them from going forward. But like I said, I was the second car in line. I could see beyond the car in front of me, and the car in front of the car next to me. There was nothing blocking either of their paths. Additionally, not a single person hawked to get their attention. Now, that might not sound like a big deal, but road rage is off the charts in my city. 
People will literally curse you out for having the audacity to take a moment to look both ways while driving through an intersection, instead of immediately accelerating as soon as the light turns green. A man just recently pulled a woman from her front car at a traffic light and beat her so badly that he gave her two black eyes and a broken nose. I wish I was joking. So my mom and I were just sitting there, completely bewildered for what felt like forever, but couldn't have been more than maybe about 90 seconds. It just felt very eerie and weird, like a pause button had been pressed. Then, all of a sudden, at the same time, the two cars took off as if the light had just turned from red to green. My mom and I both looked at each other like, what the F? And the rest of the cars around us proceeded to gently accelerate as well. I say that because, like I explained, due to the insane amount of road rage here, people will do crazy things like speed up just to cut you off if you make them wait at a traffic light for what they felt was an unreasonable amount of time. But nope, it was as if everyone else also didn't notice that the light had been green for quite a bit of time. As we were now driving down the street again, I asked my mom if she thought we'd witnessed some sort of time glitch or an illusion or something. She vehemently agreed that she couldn't think of any other explanation for what had just happened. Then, I unpaused the video for us to continue listening to it, and do you know what the first sentence was that came out of the YouTuber's mouth? These were her exact words. We live in a magical world. We live in a world full of illusions. I had literally just asked my mom if she thought we'd witness an illusion. Strange. Case file number 977, written by Whatfer, Free Medicine. Hi everyone, this happened four days ago. If there's any typo, my bad, English is not my first language. I'm asthmatic, therefore I use two different inhalers, the ones I can only order again when there's around two weeks left of medication. If I were to request another one when there's more than two weeks left, I need to have an appointment with my doctor to explain what happened. My inhaler is on the right side of my bed, just next to my head. When new medication arrives, it stays in the medicine drawer. Mind you that I hate drawers and doors that are open with all my soul. That's close to my bedroom window. So explain how I woke up with that drawer open, because that means someone was there looking around. But to my surprise, there was a package of one of my inhalers closed, brand new. The thing is that the only one I was still using had two months worth of medication left. I checked on my account for medication and there wasn't any information of new nor repeated medication by any mistakes. No messages from the nurse or doctor, nobody. I'm grateful because nowadays they take forever to bring my medication and I had a few occasions that I didn't have my main inhaler and had to literally survive with the emergency one. Two days ago, the exact same thing happened, but this time the medication had one month worth of medication. I repeat the same process as before, and there's nothing to be found. Case file number 978, written by Training Passenger 8. My voice said something else. This just happened, and my fiance and I are a little freaked out. He couldn't find his phone, and I offered to call him. When he found his phone, he answered the speaker and said, Hello? Well, next to me. I answered with, hello, too. But when we heard my voice coming from his phone, it was me clearly saying, hey. We looked at each other and I ended the call. We couldn't come up with a rational explanation, which does not mean there isn't one. We just couldn't think of one. It made me feel like one of those scenes in horror movies where a character is standing in front of a mirror and the reflection doesn't match their movements. Creepy file number 77, written by Anonymous. We encountered the men in white. I spent most of my time in the woods and nature, regardless of where we moved. Over the years, I've seen some weird crap, but this experience surely takes the cake. When I was 16 years old, I was living with my mom in New Jersey, USA. My best friend and I had an experience that we both still remember vividly, and my wife wants me to share the story to see what people think we saw. My buddy and I used to cut through this farmer's field between my mom's neighborhood and our local mall, maybe a mile or so long. It rarely had crops over the years, maybe one year of corn in the few years of cutting through it, if I remember right. The field was barren on this day, and we were headed to the mall to hang out. 
We didn't notice anything unusual on the way to the mall through the field. We stayed in the mall for about an hour or two and went back through the field to get back to my mom. We didn't drink or eat anything in the mall that I remember, no drug usage or alcohol either. When we got to the tree line between the field and the mall, we saw a handful of people all dressed somewhat similar in overalls of some sort, plaid shirts, collecting things off the ground. I figured they were harmless and we knew the old guy's name who owned the field, so probably wouldn't get yelled at if our name dropped. As we made our way through the field and got closer, I remember feeling a lot of static energy. It looked like they were picking up smoking coals off the ground and throwing them in buckets. Weird, but we didn't say anything to these folks and just kind of skirted around them till we were nearing the tree line back to my mom's neighborhood. We heard a loud whooshing noise, sort of like an air compressor. We turned back and there was a group of six identical white suited men killer or a paint sprayer, really long and thin. They didn't seem to notice us watching until my friend went into a panic and started freaking out. I grabbed him by his shirt and started dragging him towards the tree line, but he was in some sort of shock. I looked back as we were running and they were all facing us, but not pursuing. My friend went home and we didn't talk to each other for about a week. Everyone we told to date has said we were mad minus my wife and father. I will say after the initial whoosh, we never heard another noise, not even a cricket for the whole encounter till we made it back across the tree line. Bonus file, written by Uncle Monster, the faceless river entity. This happened back in the 80s. My best friend and I were wandering around the neighborhood in the afternoon and we came to a short bridge that went over a small creek. We looked over the rail and saw this kid crouched on a big flat stone at the edge of the creek poking around in the water with the stick. He was wearing a red hoodie with the hood up, blue jeans, and white high-top sneakers. I couldn't help but notice how incredibly clean his clothes and shoes looked. Well, we thought it would be funny to drop a rock in the water and splash him, seeing that he didn't know we were there. Then he just looked up at us. Didn't stand up or anything, just calmly turned his head and looked right at us. His face was pure white and perfectly smooth like an egg or something. No features at all. The fear we felt at his gaze was instant and intense. We ran like hell for about two blocks and after that day we never talked about it again. About a year later I was hanging out with some other guys riding bikes and another friend came running up out of breath and freaked out, started describing the exact same faceless kid doing the exact same thing but at a different spot along the river. I just kind of froze over, but everyone else was just making fun of him. I looked at him and just asked, super clean looking? He just went silent. I wonder if anyone else has seen this thing. Case file number 979, written by Sagittarian Pocky. Both of us heard a blast that never happened. A few months back, my boyfriend and I were laying down, about to go to sleep. It was extremely quiet and all of a sudden we saw a bright flash of white light and heard a loud boom that originated inside the room. We both jumped up and turned on a light. We were positive it came from the exact center of the bedroom, but the center of the room was completely empty. There was nothing there, no table, no items, no lights, nothing. The furniture is against the walls. The room doesn't have a window either. The light came from inside the room even though no lights were on to begin with. To this day, we still try to theorize what it was. Did a water bottle pop back into shape? No, we drink water from glass cups. Did the cat do something? No, he didn't have a cat when this happened. Was it a thunderstorm? No, the weather was clear. Was it a power outage? Nope, power was on, obviously. We turned on a light. Was it a phone? No, they were under the blankets. It never happened again, but it still weirds us out. Where did it come from? What was it? Case fall number 980, written by Morning6039. Someone helped my doppelganger. I still recall this incident frequently and wonder what the hell happened that day. I'd gone bowling with my cousin and right when we were about to leave, I heard a voice calling my name and we both turned around and saw two boys. One of them was calling my name and looking right at me. He was a complete stranger and we approached him because I was shocked that he knew me while I had never seen his face. 
At first, I thought he was an old classmate of mine from primary school, and he had probably changed so much that I couldn't recognize him. I asked him who he was, and he seemed baffled that I didn't remember him. He told me, Don't you remember me? I'm his name, who helped you put your suitcase in the car last week. I asked him where that had happened, and he named one of the towns around the one I live in. I was so confused because this had never happened, and I told him he must be thinking of someone else. He said, Aren't you my name? And I said, Yeah, but I've never seen you before. He replied, You look exactly like her. I never forgot about that day. I still wonder who that girl was and how it's possible that she had my name and looked exactly like me and apparently lives near me too. Case fall number 981, written by Bearbell X. My cousin paid us a visit, but it wasn't her. Hello, this is a story that still haunts me to this day. What I want to tell you about happened like half a year ago. It's about me, female 20, my cousin, female 36, and my grandma, female 66. If any of this matters, I grew up with my grandma, and my cousin is actually the second closest person I have in my life since day one. She lives a few towns away, but she comes over to visit me and my grandma at least once a month. Since I can remember, it has never been any different than that, and when she would come over, she would always text or call me first, asking to get a coffee ready. When I was a child, she called my grandma first. She would never come without informing us before. As soon as she's at our door, it's always the same, like a little ritual. I open the door, she hugs me, puts her bag down and takes her jacket off, and then goes to the living room to hug my grandma. That in mind, let's go a few months back in time. It was a regular day in the afternoon when our doorbell rang. I didn't really know who it was, but I assumed it was the package delivery driver asking me to take a package from my neighbors or something like that. So I looked out the window. We live on the third floor of the most stereotypical East German looking flat ever. I really have to lean out to see who's there. And I saw that it was my cousin. I was pretty happy to see her, but already surprised that she came over without calling before. I opened the door and let her in, but instead of hugging me, she walked straight past me and sat down in the living room. She didn't put her bag down, because weird enough, she didn't even bring her bag. My grandma had the same reaction as me, happy about the visit, but kind of surprised, but it just got weirder. For like an hour, we just talked about the usual stuff, what's new, how's everyone, etc. At some point in the conversation, we brought up her brother's car, and she acted surprised. She said that he doesn't have a car and that she can't even remember him having a license, which is weird because she helped him get and choose the car not long ago. And she told us about that before when her brother was with her. Even after we told her that, she swore she couldn't remember. By her tone, we knew she wasn't kidding. Overall, she isn't the person who would do stuff like this just to mess with us. After two or three hours, she said she had to go home because there's work tomorrow. She stood up, walked straight to the door, and left. I looked up out of the window to say goodbye. We always do this, but she didn't even look up. My grandma and I both agreed that this was the strangest visit ever, and that we were going to ask her about it the next time she comes over. Few weeks forward, she called me as usual, saying she would come over. So I got a coffee ready, and when she was at our apartment, everything was the same as always. She came in, hugged me, put the bag down, etc. As soon as she sat down, we agreed to ask her about the last time, and she knew nothing. Like that didn't even happen in her memory. When we asked when she was here the last time, she said a month ago. But that weird visit was like two weeks ago. When we asked what we had talked about when she was here last time, she said all the stuff from the time she was here a month ago, not the last time. She thought we were kidding or trying to mess with her, but we were just so confused. She still doesn't remember this day. P.S. None of us were under influence of alcohol or any substances or anything like that. Case fall number 982, written by Infinite Cranberry 1, the Interstellar Gas Station. About three months ago, I went to pick up Chinese food at a place my husband and I go very often. I paid using my debit card and then stopped at the same gas station I always do on my way home to throw $20 in the tank. When I went inside, I didn't recognize a clerk, but didn't think about this until later. I only really noticed it was one of the five employees I always talked to because of the weird interaction I had. I went to pay with the same debit card, and it declined. 
Weird. There was not a funding problem. I went to check my phone to see if my bank had texted me about the charge for some reason, only to find that instead of having service, my phone displayed SOS where 5G usually would be. I have never seen that before. Very confused, I tried to use one of my credit cards, issued from a different bank. Declined. Now embarrassed, I found some cash and told the cashier what pump I was on. There was no one else at the gas station, and I walked back to my car, pulled out the pump, and tried to start pumping gas, to no avail. The pump wasn't cleared from the previous transaction. My phone was still saying SOS, and hairs on the back of my neck started sticking up. The street around the gas station, which should have been somewhat busy for a Saturday evening, was completely dead. I was utterly confused and felt disoriented. After pressing all three types of gas and the clear button several times, I went back inside and asked the clerk if there was something wrong with the pump. They looked at me as if they'd never seen or spoken to me before and asked which pump I was on. On the second trip, I was able to get it to work, but drove away with the strangest feeling. My phone only started working when I got back to my house, and there has never been any problems with my cell service or bank cards since. I know it seems really mundane, but I can't shake the feeling that I left reality or left this timeline for 30 minutes. Bonus file written by Trust5419, The Man Addicted to Electricity. This was about 20 years ago, in an apartment in San Diego, which was a new build. I lived there with my girlfriend for about a year, then we broke up, she moved out, and a friend moved in because he needed a place to crash for a few months and I could use the help on rent. We'll call him Z. I had a fold-out couch Z was staying on, and Z wasn't working. So he would pretty much watch TV all day or play video games while I was at work. In the evenings, we partied too much. Z would always complain that he couldn't sleep and would always find himself awake in the middle of the night, staring up at the corner of the room. I never thought of this because alcohol and drugs mess with everything so I was like, whatever, you're going to bed blackout drunk every night. So I had a DVD player with no buttons on it. You had to use a remote to control anything besides turning it on or off. Z bought Lost on DVD, <laughs> that's how old the story is, and he yelled out, hey I'm gonna start watching this, and I said let me know when it's loaded up and I'll come out. A half hour passed and I went out to find the place a mess. Long story short, he couldn't find the remote. Over the period of the next few weeks, stuff that carries electrical charges went missing. Electric razor chargers, phone chargers, mp3 player chargers, and laptop cables. Z moved out on a weekday while I was at work. The room he was staying in was empty besides the furniture. When I got home from work, all those cables were in a corner of the room. I know this wasn't him messing with me because later on he made me mail a few to him. So once Z moved out for some reason, I couldn't sleep in my own bed, and I could only sleep on the couch. Almost every night, I would just wake up sitting on the couch, staring at one upper corner of the room, just as he said he did. Where I worked, once a month, I would have to work a late shift. As such, I got home at around 7am, crashed on the couch, and around 10am I woke up and there was an old man standing in front of me about 4 feet away. I played it off as if I was just tired and dreaming but I stared at him for about a minute and realized I was awake. He wasn't dressed like an old man either. He was wearing a t-shirt, sneakers with socks that went to his calves, and a baseball cap. After about three minutes, he, in an unnatural way, turned to look at me, made eye contact, then took a few steps and disappeared. I flipped the fluck out, and while I planned to move out of there in two weeks, I was gone in a few days. I have many more stories like this, but this one carries the most weight so I wanted to share it while I was on my computer and could type it out. Case file number 983, written by Dull Yesterday 2655 the voicemail from another universe. This occurred about three years ago. I had a position as a buyer, and as such, would receive tons of cold calls and emails from people trying to get our company to try their products for resale. Also important, our company had a digital, voice over IP, not sure of the correct terminology, phone system. There was one central number and it followed a phone tree to multiple offices via internet connection. Voicemails were available on our big office phones, but the recording would also be sent to our emails. 
So one day, I received a voicemail from a phone number I recognize as someone who had been attempting to get a hold of me to sell me their products. Oddly, the voicemail was something like 15 minutes long. Curious, I began to listen to it. The message begins with just static and the sound of rustling. Seems like a classic case of butt dial, or maybe they forgot to hang up when the voicemail clicked. I fast forwarded the message just to see if anything was ever heard and yes, suddenly a clear voice. They're having a one-sided conversation. I think, ooh, these can be fun sometimes. Except the one-sided conversation is clearly with me. The person on the phone is referencing my, then recent, maternity leave, our company by name, a few other pretty identifying details that currently escape me. They'd stop speaking and it would be blank air, and then answer a pertinent question that I would have asked in that kind of conversation. Clearly speaking to me, but I never spoke to this company or this person. I did receive additional emails from them later on that were clearly initial attempts at communication and not a follow-up to a conversation. I checked with my coworkers in case somehow, somewhere, their conversation got picked up in my voicemail, and nope. Coworkers and husband were equally confused, but with zero explanation, we all just had to move on. Case file number 984, written by Tony Subliminal Fan. Their faces keep changing. I've had people who I've met before suddenly change appearances. Like, not just hair color or style, but eye color, the whole shapes of the faces, bone structures, body shapes and voices, and over a very short time, so I don't think it is a complete plastic surgery makeover. People looked at me like I'm crazy when I insisted a co-worker's girlfriend looked and sounded completely different than before. I just assumed he had brought his new girlfriend that happened to have the name of his previous one. Only her name is left intact. That's a completely new person and yet no one has noticed her shift from a bigger bone frame, naturally curly blonde blue-eyed girl, to a thinner bone, straight-haired brown-eyed girl. Spooky. Either it's a glitch or they use witchcraft spells or YouTube subliminals or something. <laughs> what about you? What do you think? Bonus file, written by Scared Expression 444 The darkness was impersonating my mom. When I was a kid, my mom and I lived with my grandparents in their three-story house. It had a basement, a ground floor, and a second floor. To give context, there was a living room directly in front of the stairs leading upstairs so you could see my mom's room on the left, important for later, and my grandparents' room on the right. My room was further down the second story hall, but I spent a lot of time alone and with my uncle in the basement. For more context, the basement was a huge rectangle with one room directly to the left of the stairs, my uncle's room, and one room in the far back left corner, storage room, also important for later. With context out of the way, time for the actual story. This all happened when I was 8 or 9, can't remember exactly. It was around when Halo 3 came out. The first time it happened is honestly the worst. I was home, sick, from school. In reality, I just wanted to play Halo, bro. But everyone in the house worked, so I was alone and my uncle was at school. The only Xbox in the house was in the basement. So naturally, when everyone left, I got up and went to go play Halo. I'm down there for a few hours playing games happily, and all of a sudden the storage room I mentioned earlier creaks open ever so slightly, not completely, just enough to see a slit of darkness and plain as day. I hear my mom call me from what sounded like the furthest corner of the storage room, saying she needed help putting something away. My mom wasn't home at the time and I knew this. I didn't turn anything off. I bolted upstairs and laid on the couch until my uncle got home from school. He asked why I left the Xbox on and he thought I was sick and laughed at me. I just laughed back and said, my bad, won't happen again. The only other time this happened was actually during a family dinner. We had cousins and pretty much our entire family over for a holiday. My cousins and I were playing with Nerf guns in the living room. They got hungry and went to get more food, so I sat by myself in the living room, reloading my magazines with darts, when something caught my eye upstairs. Same year as last encounter, I'm still 8 or 9 in this scenario. It was my mom's room door. It had opened, and because it was like 8pm, it was dark upstairs because no one was up there, so no lights were on. 
but my mom had walked out from the darkness and kind of waved me over to her with a weird smile on her face. I yelled to her, why? And she just kept waving me over, but I clearly saw my mom, so I didn't question her again and started walking over. But as soon as I got to the start of the stairs, I looked to my right and saw my mom talking with my aunt at the dinner table. So I walked over and asked her if she'd been upstairs and she said no. Went back to the living room, looked up the stairs and her doors were closed again. Nothing like that has ever happened again, but it still gives me the chills when I think about it. Case file number 985, written by Late Ad 1111 The Ketchup Mind Meld I was having lunch with my dad while my mom was out of town visiting family. We decided to have lunch at a local diner. My phone was on the table. It got silent and awkward, so I looked around for a topic of conversation. 5.09pm I told them that I hate ketchup and that it sucks. He agreed and told me he only bought it because mom liked it. A few seconds later, I got a call from her. She, my mom, tells me that we need ketchup. I asked if she heard our conversation, but she said she didn't. She called purely to tell us we needed ketchup. Then we said our goodbyes and that was the entirety of the call. I asked her later why she called just to tell us that. She said she just randomly remembered and didn't want to forget to ask us to pick up some. Creepy file number 78, written by Jack Black, The Road of Nightmares. I'm still a little shaken up. I saw it again. This creature, whatever it can be called. A little bit more info. I got a Glock because reliability was a recurring topic for defense when I last mentioned this. I also got it blessed, including the ammo, by a priest because many others said religion would help. I also got a personalized grip with some scripture on it and put a cross on the slide in the magazine. I also kept a Bible and rosary just for my car. So, my buddy and I were on our way home from a party at my mother's house at around 1.30 to 2 and went down the same direction I went before. Oh yeah, I wasn't alone this time either. Anyway, we were just driving and joking around like any other night and once we got to a certain point, there was heavy fog, much like before, so obviously I slowed down a bit. We drove normally for a bit after that with much less conversation because of the fog. Then the turn started again. My buddy, who we're gonna call DJ, mentioned the turns, and then I mentioned the story that he had laughed at me about and never believed. After that, he was very serious and we didn't joke around anymore, now he was in it. We went up an incredibly steep hill that just kept going up. There were turns both sharp and wide, but we kept going upwards the entire time, at least 20 minutes. About 15 minutes into the climb, DJ started to pray, we are both religious and I handed him the rosary I kept in the car, and he took out the Bible I keep in there too. After that, we stopped moving up and the road flattened out. After going straight for a little while, there was another very tight turn. I felt the air stand up all over my body and drew the Glock from where I kept it. DJ saw and drew his as well. As we round the corner, I slow down even more, barely crawling forward. The corner ends and that thing is there, in the road, crouched just the same as before. DJ says something but I don't know what he said and I stop the car. We are farther back than I was the first time. This thing is just barely visible at the edge of the fog. I lean out my window and level my gun. DJ does the same except he opened his door and rested his weapon on that. Also, not to forget to put a description in here. So it was about 7.5 feet tall, very tall gritty pale skin, skinny as hell with long arms, no clothes visible. I wait for something to happen. I don't know what I was waiting for, but I didn't fire. We sit like that for maybe two or three minutes until DJ says, the hell are we doing here bro? Let's get the frick out of here. He shuts his door, but keeps his gun outside the car and leveled. I get back in and put the car in reverse. As soon as I do that, that thing stands up. It didn't do it the same way as before. It was instant. There wasn't anything in between crouched and standing, like a video skipping frames. I pressed the gas and slowly moved backwards, and it disappeared into the fog. DJ relaxes and pulls his gun inside and lets out a nervous chuckle. 
I back up more and turn the car around. When we get all the way around, the creature is in front of us again, closer than it was before, still facing away from us. Not gonna lie, we might have screamed like little girls, but it didn't move when we did. I put the car back in reverse and gunned it backwards till it disappeared back into the fog. This time DJ is screaming for me to get us the hell out of here. I say that I'm doing everything I can. After going backwards a bit, I bring the car to a stop, getting ready to turn around again. Before I can, DJ screams again and I look up. This thing is definitely facing us now and is coming at us full tilt. Its mouth was open but making no noise. Its arms were spread out like it was going to try to grab the hood of the car. I lean out and just randomly and see it running. DJ leans out and tries to fire but he doesn't. I gun it forward and just speed off. We both notice that something is making sparks out of the back of the car but I don't stop to check. We keep driving and end up going back down the incline we climbed before for about 5 minutes before we are suddenly back on the road we were originally driving before the fog rolled in and the fog slowly dissipates over the next mile or so. Once the fog is gone, we drive for a little longer then pull over and see that the thing knocked my muffler loose and it was dragging on the pavement. I attached some zip ties to keep it off the ground, then we left and went home, silent the whole time, gripping steel till we walked in the door. I don't know what to do now, but I figured you guys might. At least someone believes me now, I guess. Like before, I hear the bottle calling my name for now. I need some relief. Case file number 986, written by The Host 404. The elderly couple with superhuman powers. Once, my cousins and I were taking a trip on a bike path. I don't remember where, but we were riding our bikes to Corona, California. The bike path is a straight route with forests on one side and a river on another. About 30 minutes before making it to Corona, we saw an elderly couple walking slowly towards the same way we were biking. The elderly man was in a wheelchair with an orange flag attached to it and the woman, which I'm assuming is his wife, was pushing him and she had a large cloth grocery bag so we sped past them. Upon arriving at our destination, we were shocked to see the same elderly couple walking towards the end of the bike path. How did they make it to the end so quickly? We don't know. There was no way someone could have picked them up in a car because cars can't go through the bike route. It's completely separate. We thought maybe it wasn't the same couple but the orange flag, the woman's short curly grey hair and her large cloth grocery bag were identical. Case file number 987, written by Al Carter, The Ghost Family. About three years ago, I worked at a pizzeria where I carried out varied tasks depending on urgency. This evening, I was in charge of deliveries. A couple and their two children, who were regular customers, ordered by phone and came to pick up their order at the restaurant. Usually they opted for delivery, but this wasn't the first time they had come to pick it up. As they left, I walked past them. A few minutes later, we realized that they were missing an item. We tried calling them, but there was no answer. As they were loyal customers and I had a delivery nearby their address, I decided to drop off the missing item myself. However, when I arrived at their building, something seemed off. They lived on the ground floor of a small building and their yard was usually filled with children's toys, but that day was empty. I rang the intercom and through the glass door of the building, I saw an elderly woman opening the door of the flat and coming to me. She told me that she had lived there for years and there was no family living there. Confused, I went back to my car and video called my colleague to make sure I wasn't going crazy. She became puzzled as I had just been and confirmed that I was at the correct address. This would have been surprising otherwise as I had delivered to them several times before and was very familiar with the neighborhood. I tried calling the customers again but still no answer. Eventually I had to move on as I was running out of time. About two weeks later, they reordered as if nothing had happened. I made the delivery and everything seemed back to normal, it was the same address. Of course, I told them about the strange events. They were just as confused as I was and had no explanation since they of course didn't move and no elderly woman lived with them. Moreover, they were certain that they had gone straight home after picking up their order. Since these events, we have referred to them as the ghost family. 
Bonus file. Written by 16 The Tower. The Zebra Man. It all started when I was about five. My parents never had a lot of money. At least a few times a year, power was turned off due to failure to pay bills. Since it was such a frequent occurrence, we always kept a big box of candles and tea lights to light the house in the evenings when we didn't have power. My parents had put me to bed and blown out most of the candles, with the exception of the ones in the room. I woke up at some point early in the night to go use the bathroom, which was directly across the hall from my room in the trailer. I paused in the dark hallway and looked to my left, through the living room and into my parents' room and I see him, the zebra man. He was roughly my dad's height, six foot one, and honestly his appearance haunts my dreams still. He had the completely nude torso of a human male, but the head, lower arms and legs and hands and feet of a zebra. His face though was slightly different, particularly his eyes. His eyes were orange and marquee shaped and not set in the typical spot for an equine. Instead, they were centered at the front of his face. I was a child. I stared. I didn't know if he was real or not. Then he started sprinting, like a human, at me. I started screaming and bolted into the bathroom. I could hear his hooves clicking across our hardwood floor. They got close enough to the bathroom that I could feel the vibrations from his footsteps in the floor under my feet. And then they stopped. Seconds later, my parents were in the bathroom with me as I screamed and cried, terrified. My parents assumed I was sleepwalking. Then it happened again. A few months later, I saw the zebra man again, and again I stared and he started running at me. Cue screaming and hiding, and my parents coming to comfort me again. As I got older, the zebra man showed up every time we were lighting the house with candles. I learned quickly that as long as I had just glanced at him, he would be gone after I'd gone to the bathroom. The last time I saw him, I was 14. He chased me at that time, stopping just short of the bathroom door as he had many times before. After that, home felt a lot more peaceful at night, like something negative had finally disappeared from my life. Case file number 988, written by Straight for Shady. I spent four years living in an alternate universe. I think I know what happened, but there are some things I can't explain well. I have several vivid early memories up to age 6 of myself in my current life. They track exactly with what my family remembers and with pictures and timelines, etc. Around the age of 5, I began having terrifying nightmares that I couldn't wake up from and didn't know weren't real. I would go days thinking that my nightmares were real. I still have nightmares and night terrors like this where I wake up screaming, with scratches, bruises, and feeling deeply disturbed. When I was six, my two best friends moved away, and that is my last real memory, before I fell asleep and woke up when I was ten. The alternate life and reality are very similar, but there were enough differences and scattered memories that it noticeably doesn't match up. I remember things that reportedly never happened to me and I have no recollection of things that did. For example, I remember a situation where I watched the neighbor's kids for 30 minutes when I was 8. When I woke up, 4 years had passed. The kids were the same age and I didn't babysit them for the first time for 30 minutes until I was 11. When I was 11, I knew exactly what was going to happen during those 30 minutes because I knew already that I had already done it. It was like what I had previously experienced came true four years later. I've kept journals since I could write, and I remember writing, Yesterday was 2005, now it is 2006, about my New Year's Eve. What I remember happening was going to the planes and watching fireworks. I did write the first sentence, but in the physical diary, I didn't say what we did. When I asked my mom, it turned out we were in our neighborhood that year. We have pictures of my sister and me at two kids' exhibits in Niagara Falls on the same day. I remember one, which was a glass factory. We have pictures of another, which I think was a science factory. I remember the outfit because I thought it was really pretty, but not the event. It doesn't even seem familiar when I look at the pictures. Like the kid in them is me, but it isn't how I remember myself during those years. It's just a little off. I know it's normal for kids to forget things, but 15 years later, I still don't recognize myself or anything in it. 
It was like I fell asleep, lived for four years, went back to sleep during those four years, and woke up in another alternate life. It really shook me up and felt like I was seeing the world in a different filter. Colors were slightly different, people looked a bit different, I felt shorter than in my dream, and I felt emotions differently. They were much, much stronger. My personality changed completely. I became more withdrawn, aloof, depressed. I had panic attacks all the time and would get overstimulated by seemingly small things. I've been that way ever since. Weirdly enough, my mom says the same thing. Around the time I was 10, my personality changed a lot. Personalities and a sense of identity don't really develop until around that age, so it's entirely possible my personality was mainly a mix of what I saw and what I imagined, and that's why I was so different after those four years. As an adult, I've been diagnosed with several mental illnesses including bipolar with psychosis and borderline personality disorder, both of which can feature symptoms of dissociation, depersonalization, and derealization. I do not have a dissociative disorder, so I'm pretty sure all of this was the beginning of my psychosis and dissociation related to the other disorders that I would experience for the majority of my life. That really doesn't make it any less weird to me. Creepy File Number 79 Written by Shot Material 509 A dog-like monster stalks me. All my life, I've been followed by a black and white dog. I'm always with someone else when I see it, either I see it as black and they see it as white, or vice versa. It disappears in plain sight, no kidding, it vanishes in thin air, and I'm never alone when I see it. It's very scrawny and bony looking, but very tall and walks more like a deer than a dog. It sounds weird to say, but the way it places its legs when walking is more deer or goat-like than canine-like. Once I saw it while I was hunting, when I tried to shoot it, my gun clicked into safety mode. These experiences continue to get more unnerving as the last time I heard it was inside my house, and I believe it was inside my house with me. I'm thankful my family knows I'm not crazy because they've seen the same damn thing, even a cop saw it when I was walking back home. He walked up to it with his gun drawn and it vanished in plain sight again. Is this common? I can't find anyone else who said something similar happened to them. I have so many more sightings and experiences with this entity, but not enough space in one post to describe them all. It's almost endless. Bonus File Written by Repulsive Ad 1163 Pointed Horror This morning I woke up around 5am. I do my laundry at a laundromat, so I decided to gather my soiled linens and make my way over to the place. I wash them and then put them in a dryer. Now, for a little more information, I was the only person at the laundromat. It's almost 6am at this point and I have my headphones in, listening to music. I stand up and walk over to the top loading washing machines to see how much they run for, because I normally use a pricier washing machine. Again, I'm listening to music, airpods in, full blast. As I'm reaching for the lid to the top loader, I hear a very loud and menacing, hey, I jump out of my seat to see a very tall, heavy man in a black coat pointing directly at me. I saw him for not even a second, and then he evaporated. He sounded angry, and the energy in the room was suffocating. I felt my heart beating in my ears, wanting to run out of there, but I didn't want to leave my clothes behind. I called my wife and told her everything, shaking within my tone. Needless to say, I folded my clothes very quickly. I don't think I'll be going back there by myself anytime soon. Case file number 989, written by Postwater Malone. The Time Resetting Train. I was on my normal commute this morning riding the Q train, and I cannot figure out what happened to me. I approached a stop and stood up thinking it was mine, only to find out I was at Courtly U Road, which is a stop before mine for work. I looked around then sat back down. The train doors close. It leaves the station and continues on while I return to my phone. Train came to the next stop where I stood up to leave, but I looked around and I was at Quarterly U, again. Everything looked exactly the same as if I never left, but I know the train moved. I looked at everyone around me to see if they were just as confused as me, but no one was. Can anyone think of a logical explanation? Because I can't. Case file number 990. Written by Anonymous. 
Mirror, mirror on the wall. So my roommate just moved out yesterday, midday, and she had a mirror hanging on our bathroom door. The bathroom is small, and the mirror is visible from everywhere in the bathroom, and you can see your full reflection from inside the shower. I had said when she was moving that I was going to miss that mirror because I didn't have a full length one. As I was getting into the shower that night, where not only the mirror but also my reflection would be obviously in view, I looked back at the white door and thought to myself, God, I'm sad I don't have that mirror. I can't afford a new one and I like to see what my body looks like, sue me. Anyways, I finished my shower, got ready, left the bathroom, etc. Then my ex-roommate texts me and says, I left the mirror in the bathroom because I have one in the closet here. She left a few things with me because they were duplicates at her new place. I'm like, what? I go and check the bathroom and there it is, hanging from the door. I am so weirded out because I intentionally looked back and it wasn't there only a half hour before while I was showering. What the hell? Creepy file number 80, written by Queasy Comfort 8559, stalked in an Ohio State Park. I work as a childcare professional, and one of the kids that I look after recently got into hiking. I decided to take him to a really cool trail in Salt Fork State Park. We were all set to hike Hozak's cave after parking right near the beginning of the trailhead. The entire trail is about a half a mile, which is why I chose this trail for a hike that day. I also chose this trail because any time that I had been on it before, it was very busy and full of people and a very popular spot which made me feel secure. However, this past summer we had a cluster of severe summer storms which caused massive damage to the trail so to my surprise, it was much more difficult and completely empty. I wasn't bothered by the trail being obviously empty because there was a small construction crew working on a bridge that was just barely visible from the trailhead. He was still up for the hike, despite the entire width of the trail being washed out until it was no more than a foot wide, with a 6-12 to 12 foot drop off into a creek bed that is solid rock and several trees down. He is very athletic, and I was confident in his abilities, and he was so excited to tackle our adventure. We made it all the way to a platform that allows you to see the entire cave. There were many down trees surrounding the platform, and it was actually closed at this point, but we had made it this far, so we decided to maneuver around the platform and proceed a few hundred feet into the cave. We spent the most time in this area due to the difficulty, so I know exactly what it looked like. There were three routes directly under the platform, and you could climb down either side of them. It is also worth noting that Hozak's cave is much more like a cliff with an overhanging rock formation and a trickle of a waterfall directly in the middle. It is not a creepy closed up cave, it is very open and beautiful. We got to the cave and I noticed a candle that was not burning recently, but had been at some point sitting on a large rock that had a heart carved into it. I chalked it up to someone having a date or something and disregarded it. He wanted to climb to the top, where I noticed two more candles and three stacks of small rocks that had been stacked up by somebody. I definitely felt weird at this point, but it was about this time that he found a small puddle full of baby salamanders and wanted to catch them. It was the happiest that I had seen him in a very long time and I didn't have the heart to tell him that it was time to go. We spent about an hour catching baby salamanders and I watched him have the time of his life. We finally decided to leave and when we got to the platform, dead center in the middle of the tree roots was a wet washcloth hanging that was absolutely not there before. He noticed it as well but did not pick up on the severity of the situation that we were in. At that moment I factually knew two things, one, someone was watching us and we did not see them and two, they were now potentially hiding in the woods and made it a point not to be seen but to leave an object to be noticed. There was no running back with the narrow trail and I was not about to tell him that we were in potential danger. I told him to go in front of me and I just kept encouraging him that he was doing great over and over and that seemed to speed him up naturally. I never saw anyone while we were on the trail. We got to the car and I locked the doors immediately. On our way out of the park, a very dirty man probably in his 30s came out of the woods and made it a point to stare at me with the most empty of expressions that I have ever seen. 
The man followed me with his eyes and head as I drove by him and continued to stare at me until I couldn't see him anymore. I knew the third fact at that point. He made it a point to make himself apparent to me, and that facts one and two were true. That stare stuck with me for days, and I considered counseling after this as it bothered me for several weeks causing me severe anxiety. I tried to tell myself that maybe we just interrupted his bath time, and he was camping and didn't want to startle us. After all, the crazy looking man had ample time to do anything that he wanted to while we were catching salamanders. I just cannot in any way rationalize why he stared into my eyes the way that he did if he wanted to go unnoticed. Deep down, I know that it is much more likely that it was a deliberate action intended to scare me. The boy never had any idea how panicked I was and to this day, it was the most fun that I've ever seen him have. He brings it up regularly and it was a very positive experience for him. It was one of my worst experiences ever and it made me feel so sick and disturbed. Case file number 991 written by Trigonometry. All of my coworkers randomly despawned. I work at a distribution center slash packing plant for an advertising company. Basically, it means I stand at a table and pack boxes full of paper all day, printing the shipping labels and stuff like that. It's a decent job, and I like my coworkers, so it's not really as boring as it sounds. The warehouse is about 2,000 square feet and is more or less a giant cinder block rectangle. There are very few windows. There's an office type area along the eastern side, contains the break room, unisex bathroom, a cubicle for our IT guy, and nothing else. And the stacks where we park the forklift and pallet jacks are on the west side. The stacks are all either short enough to see over or empty enough to see through. The rest of the warehouse floor is visible open space with the receiving bay, garage where the FedEx trucks come in, on the north end, and my station on the south end. I have five co-workers. I'll call them Mary, Josh, Matt, Alex, and Joe. Mary works at a station next to me, building the kits and packing the boxes. Josh and Matt work in the stacks, scanning out materials for Mary and I to pack. Alex is the aforementioned IT guy. Joe's the floor manager and my direct boss. One of the perks of my job is that since the work is kind of mindless and nobody really talks to me, they're all older than me by a significant amount. I get to listen to music while I work. I have a kind of irritating and loud taste, so I wear a pair of earbuds to listen. Also because Joe keeps sports talk radio on all day on the floor, but whatever. A couple of weeks ago, I was at my station, standing facing south. I was pre-building some boxes for a packing order we were going to have coming in later that week, so I had my music up a little louder than usual to cover up the sound of the tape gun. I could see Mary out of the corner of my eye working on something at the next station, and whenever I lifted my head, I could see both Josh and Matt in the stacks with their scanner guns and carts. Alex was in his office as far as I knew, and I couldn't see Joe. I built another stack of 10 or so boxes, took me maybe 6 or 7 minutes, before leaving to use the bathroom. I went into the little office space and noticed that Alex wasn't there, but wasn't really focused on it. I entered the bathroom, did my thing, and left. When I got out of the bathroom, Alex was still gone. I didn't think much of it. I knew he couldn't be in the bathroom since I would have seen him come in, but I guess I assumed he'd gone out onto the floor to ask someone a question or something. The office space where the bathroom is is so small that you can see all of it from the entrance, so he couldn't have been in there without me seeing him. I walked out of the office back to my station and picked up my stuff to get back to work when I noticed that Mary was also gone, along with her water bottle and the roll of label stickers she'd been using. I looked around towards the stacks for Matt and Josh, they're both over 6 feet tall and incredibly easily visible, normally, but I couldn't see them or their carts. I took off my earbuds and noticed that the warehouse was completely silent. No delivery trucks idling in the receiving bay, no rumble of cartwheels or footsteps on the concrete, and even my boss's radio was turned off. I left my station and walked across the floor, the motion activated lights turning back on as I went, trying to look closer into the stacks to see if they were just out of view, but like I said, the warehouse isn't that big and they just weren't there. I never saw Mary, Alex, or Joe either nor any of their stuff, the scanner guns or carts or label stickers. 
It was just like I'd imagined them all being at work today. I left the stacks and checked out the receiving bay. Nothing, and none of the garage doors were open. Break room, also nothing. It was around 3pm now, everyone eats around noon and we all clock out at 4. So they hadn't all somehow gone for lunch without me noticing. By this point, I'd done a complete loop of the entire warehouse, outright calling out for people as I went, and all my coworkers just seemed to have fallen off the face of the earth. The ad agency that owns the warehouse, a couple streets down, and he said he couldn't think of any reason for anyone to just up and leave like that. It hasn't happened since, at work or otherwise. I do keep my music volume a little lower while I work though. I can't help but wonder if something happened and I just couldn't hear it. Case file number 992, written by Dear Maria, The Mysterious Case of Missing Tamale. So last week, I was home alone for a few days and went to get some tamales and a pupusa from an El Salvadorian place down the road. I ordered two tamales and one pupusa. I sat my food down, opened the bag, and got up to get a plate. I finished one tamale and the pupusa. When I was done, I went to get the other tamale from the bag to put it in the fridge, but it was nowhere to be found. I know I had two because they fell out of the package they were in and I put them back in there before I ate the first one. I searched every single corner of my tiny house, even in rooms I didn't go in. I looked under the table, under the couch, nothing. I don't think one of my pets snuck off with it either because I would have found the tinfoil in their wake. I have no clue where it went and I think I would have smelled it by now if it was hidden somewhere. It simply disappeared. So strange. Case file number 993, written by Barkella. In theaters, the repeating pattern of life. To preface the story, I do not believe in ghosts or anything paranormal, but this is something I fully cannot explain. In case anyone is wondering, I have never taken any mind-altering substances and was over 16 for everything discussed. For context, I have worked at a movie theater for around 8 years. In late 2017, I received a promotion to manager and began to close the building at night. In short, besides office work, all that is required to close is to go through each auditorium in the theater and check to make sure nobody is still there. The first time anything unexplainable occurred was January 8th, 2018. I was making my rounds as usual, checking each theater to make sure everyone had left. When I got to Auditorium 9, one of the last ones left to check, I began to walk up the walkway towards the seat when I heard voices. I didn't think much of it, but was slightly annoyed as the last movie playing in that auditorium had ended nearly two hours prior to my check. It isn't incredibly rare for people to have long conversations after their movie has ended, but two hours is a long time. I couldn't make out what they were saying, but I could tell they were a group of two, a man and a woman. As I approached the end of the walkway and neared the corner to look up at the seats, the couple must have heard my footsteps or keys because I very clearly heard the man say, hold on. I turned the corner and began to say something about us being closed and them needing to head out. Upon looking up at the seats, I realized there was nobody there. I swear to God, I checked behind every seat in the auditorium and behind the screen, absolutely nothing. Beside the entrance to the auditorium where I was walking up, the only other exits are two alarmed emergency doors on either side of the screen that lead outside. No alarms were set off and I checked to make sure both were functional. Finally, I checked if, for any reason, there was some audio playing in the auditorium. The projector had completed its closing shutdown an hour and a half before I was in the theater. While still having no concrete explanation, I chalked it up to being tired and convinced myself I was just hearing things. Fast forward to a year later, with nothing strange happening, and the second instance occurred. This night, instead of checking each auditorium on the ground level, I chose instead to look in through the small windows in the booth, the upstairs area containing the projectors. While the view of the auditorium below isn't perfect, the top-down view is still enough to tell if any stragglers are still hanging around. I got to auditorium number 9 and, peering in, I noticed a couple holding hands in the middle two seats of the middle row. I could only barely make out the top two heads above the seats and their held hands resting on the cup holder separating them. 
Again, I was slightly annoyed as the last movie had broken hours prior, but at that point I had drawn no parallels between this night and the previous one, one year sooner. Due to there being an employee staircase directly next to my location in the booth, it took me about 45 seconds to get to the auditorium. Walking up, I heard the muffled voices of a man and a woman, and at this point there was a certain degree of déjà vu. Sure enough, upon nearing the corner, I heard the man say, hold on. Immediately realizing the similarity, I paused, took a breath and turned the corner. Nobody was there. I freaked out, checked under every seat, behind the screen and both alarm doors were not triggered. Furthermore, I knew for a fact the projector was shut down as I had been in booth two minutes prior. This time, I took a step further in my search for an answer. I checked every exit camera in the entire theater and there was nothing. I also checked the outdoor cameras that view the exit doors of the auditorium. Again, nothing. Finally, I looked at the assigned seating chart for the last show in that auditorium. It was a Hindi language Bollywood movie that had sold no tickets that day. Needless to say, I was incredibly uncomfortable and it only got worse when I realized the date. I kid you not, it was January 8, 2019. I confirmed the first time was the same date by checking a text conversation I had with a coworker that night, joking about how I was losing it tonight, after the first instance. Again, I do not believe in ghosts or the paranormal, but ever since the second instance I have not checked auditorium number 9 on January 8th. I have thought about this a lot since, and still have no possible clue as to what may have occurred. None of my fellow managers have experienced this but I have also been the only one working the closing shift on January 8th for the last 5 years straight. If anyone has any theories, I'd be more than interested in hearing them. I recognize this story could probably be posted on Paranormal, but I don't really believe in anything paranormal occurred here. I can provide any further details that are requested, but I'm not willing to share any information on where my location is or what company I work for. As well, to clarify, when I say I don't believe in ghosts or paranormal, I more so mean in the horror sense, stuff like horror movie hauntings, throwing chairs or leaving messages in blood, that sort of thing. The Ghost Adventures TV show, for example. The idea of a moment or event being locked in time or souls unable to fully move on for whatever reason is something I am open to and have considered here. I apologize for the close-minded wording. It can be difficult to fully convey one's thoughts in text. Case file number 994, written by Smoke in the Arcade. Elevators return in full glitch force. This happened a couple months ago, and my friend and I are still perplexed about it. My friend visited me in my apartment complex. There's two elevators that are next to each other. As we're entering the building, making our way to my apartment, I live on the third floor, and walking towards the elevators, we see a person just entering the left one and the door closing behind them. My friend presses the up button and naturally we expect the right elevator to open because we just missed the other one. However, after a short moment, the left elevators open again and it's empty. We both looked at each other in confusion because we clearly saw someone entering it. We had no explanation as to where this person suddenly disappeared. We even tested how long it would take for the elevator to go to the second floor and come back and measured the time. It took 40 seconds, that was the fastest possible, and we were both absolutely certain that when it happened, the door wasn't closed for more than 3-4 to four seconds. What do you think? A glitch? A ghost? Or is there a logical explanation? Case file number 995, written by Kessie Chris. The universe recovered my promise ring. I am 35 years old and married to the man I started dating in my junior year of high school. When I was 17, he wrote me a poem and presented me with a promise ring. We ended up getting married when I was 18 a year later. I switched out my promise ring to my wedding ring and lost the promise ring during one of the many times we had moved. A few months ago, my promise ring was on my dresser. We have since owned a home, sold it, packed everything up and moved from Minnesota to Alabama. I never had the ring in the house we sold. We have pretty much all new furniture from our move to Minnesota to Alabama. The dresser is a year old. I asked my husband if he found it. He has no idea where it came from. The many times we've moved, 
I am the one that does 95% of the packing. Like, I've touched all of our things in detail. It was just out in the open on top of my dresser. It also can't just be a ring that looks like it. First, it's gold, and I don't buy gold rings. Secondly, it was always a little tight on me because he got one that was one size too small. The ring is one size too small. It's the exact ring. My mind is still blown by this. Case file number 996, written by Sweaty Morning 5744. Traveling Shoes, a mysterious case. A very strange incident happened to me while we were shifting our apartment. Due to some financial issues, my family of four, mom, dad, me, and my elder sister, had to sell our own apartment and shift to a rented apartment not very far from where we used to live. This incident is not very old. I was 19 and was about to turn 20 next month. I had this perfect pair of black high-top suede shoes. In fact, I still have them. I haven't thrown them out, but I don't wear them as they're in rough shape. I wore those shoes throughout my junior college year, and they were my go-to pair for outdoors, so I always had them up on the shoe rack. We were packing our individual stuff in polythene bags and cardboard boxes, and I remember picking all my shoes, and the first one to go into the box was these black ones. After finishing all the packing, we had all of our stuff, including all of the furniture, in the new rented apartment. The first thing I started to unpack were my shoes, and to my surprise, the shoes were not there. I asked my mom and my sister if they saw them. They both denied seeing them. I thought I must have left it back at our old apartment, so I went back to check and could not find them there, as there was nothing left there. I was pretty sad, as I loved that pair. I went to the store to buy a new pair, but could not find a similar pair. After some time, I just accepted the fact that I lost them. Somewhere in the boxes or the packing, or the moving crew must have stolen them. These are the only possibilities I could think of. My family and I visit my grandparents every year during the holidays, and I sometimes go there in the summer as well, so we did visit them that year too. The holiday season was great, and we had so much fun. When we started to pack our bags to go back, my grandma came to me with the same pair of shoes I lost. I was shocked to see the same pair with her. It even had the stains that my previous one had. I asked her how and where she found them. To that she replied, You left them here when you came here in summer. I'm damn sure that I didn't leave them there in the summer, as I wore them so many times after the summer. And what about me remembering to pack them in the boxes? I still can't explain how this must have happened. I told my mom and sister, and they were also shocked to see them here. My mind can't digest the fact that when I put these shoes in the box, they somehow ended up at my grandma's place. Bonus file written by Iza. Say hello to the Grim Reaper. My mother had an experience I'd like to share from a few weeks ago. For a little background, over the past six weeks, my father has been undergoing various medical tests such as blood work, CT scans, MRIs, and multiple biopsies to determine why he is experiencing so much stomach and back pain. Early blood work indicated pancreatic cancer, and the doctor just confirmed this week that he had stage 4 pancreatic cancer. My whole family has been a mess during and it just never happened again. After not hearing a peep, they decided to check the house to make sure it wasn't an intruder. They checked every room in the house and found no evidence of break-in or what could have made that noise. Has anyone had a similar experience or have any thoughts on what that noise was? In hindsight, my mom really feels like it was a grim reaper, signaling that he's coming for my dad. Case notes are file 957. Disney World duplicated my son. So, as you can see, clean shaven again. Brought back the baby face. As beginning to look like a wildling for a little bit, so I thought it was a good idea. So I've never been to Disney World myself, even growing up. I did live briefly in Florida, like a couple months with my parents. I don't even remember it, I was so young. I did hear about the Star Wars experience, which sounds pretty cool. Very immersive kind of ride. Wouldn't mind trying that at some point. I'm glad you uh, enjoyed it with your family. Now for me, growing up, it was all La Ronde, which is the amusement park area in uh, Montreal. Quebec. Pretty much the only one that you, you go to outside of water parks. It's a good, uh, it's a really cool place. I think given that you all heard your son, it's most likely that he was projecting his soul forward. I'm not sure it was a time slip anomaly. 
Unless it was an alternate timeline, which may be in that case, because obviously your son didn't repeat the same events. But indeed my gut says, this is a astral projection. Most peculiar aspect of that to me is that you don't feel it. Even when it's happening in real time in your conscious, your soul can fragment ahead and you don't even feel it. Case notes are file 958. Command the universe and it'll listen. You know, I think you should just ask for it back, this uh, fidget spinner. Even though your friend already made you a new one, it takes time to break it in and I, I know what you mean. My friend also is making me fidget toys for uh, from his 3D printer. Not ones that spin, just ones you, well, fidget with. But yeah, if you command the universe to return lost items, it almost always works if it's something you really want back. If it's just a tennis ball, the universe doesn't give a damn. But if it's an important fidget spinner, maybe, maybe it'll work. It's almost like Janet in The Good Place, where it's like this uh, universal butler that has infinite knowledge and abilities that can just manifest whatever is required. It's sort of like that. Uh, I don't know if it's an angel or a programmed entity that just has access to all of the processing power of the simulation. Case notes for file 959, Two Mighty Atlases. Yeah, when I was working at uh, Humane Society Kennel down in Florida, it was 1920, you wouldn't believe how inhuman some people are in relation to pets. It's just monstrous. One of them just left a, a dog tethered to the tree in front of the kennel, didn't even come inside to bring him in. What is that? It sounds like you take great care of your pets though, your uh, Atlas and the other two. <laughs> so yeah, maybe the universe just said, okay, here, have another one. I think it's probably a ported event. The Alice in a different universe came over to this one. Maybe not entirely though, because there's no collar on the second one. Hmm. And uh, in that universe, I'm assuming you would have uh, collared him as well, just so you have some, some way to track him if he's lost. Some actual duplication event within the same universe without any other copy being taken from a different universe. Or maybe he was astray in a different universe, but still obviously the same general characteristics. Wouldn't have been as well fed though. Wouldn't it be as big? You would Notice a difference physically in that case. Case notes are file 960. The mighty pen that materialized in front of our faces. Yeah, this is an extremely vivid memory in my mind of another story where this woman had lost a necklace, a pendant, the pendant from the necklace, and it had rematerialized eventually after months, I believe, or maybe a year, in the kitchen area, just as she turned the corner heading into it, and it was just frame by frame was described. One instant it wasn't there, and the other it was. There was no fading in or like popping in or you know pushing in or anything like that. Just not there and then there. As simple as that. And then it, it was a freeze frame and then it eventually fell back down after a second. It's like gravity wasn't relevant for a moment. And I think similar in this case to the pen. Not there in one frame and then there in the other. And sort of a pause before it fell to the ground. To me, this could be related to some sort of entity controlling it, and if there was some ghost or spirit that was able to manipulate it, maybe out of this realm and back in, and then hold it there, that would explain why it's levitating. It's not that physics just stopped working, it's that something, some other force was holding it there for a brief period of time, in that rephasing period, and then it's there. But yeah, DOP is the most common glitch in my opinion from what I've read, it's just everywhere. Maybe the most common reported, there is that problem, reporting bias, selection sample bias, reporting bias, these are known issues in statistics and trying to <laughs> understand reality. If something disappears and you just miss it, well, I think it's more likely someone would be willing to share a story like that because no one would think you're crazy, like it happens to everyone. <laughs> so you have that state where maybe it's not the most common, it's just the most commonly reported. But I do think it's very common either way. But it's funny because it's so common and yet it doesn't really happen to me. It happened once, well twice, with two tennis balls. But that's it. Figured it would happen more. <laughs> Maybe eventually. Nothing important, please. Case notes are file 961. My daughter vanished at the theater. So I kind of love this. Like every story I read now, my mind just goes, oh yeah, I read a story like this. There was that one and that one and that one. There's so many parallels now. It's pretty cool. There's a pattern emerging, a tapestry of the universe that I'm finally beginning to un understand now with enough stories in my mind compiled up, up there. But yeah, the, the other story I was vividly remembering is also involving a theater. Oh, Dave is falling off. Two friends I went to the theater, also went to the bathroom, but then when they came out, 
Both of them were out and describing that, that case of being outside the bathroom, but eventually one person went back in and then came back out and then they saw each other. But both were adamant that they were outside the bathroom and there's only one way in or out. So there's no possible way they wouldn't have seen each other. And I don't think either of them were lying. I think they just were out of phase, maybe seeing into a different parallel universe, universal or multiversal peering, as I like to call it. They were both there, they just couldn't see each other. It's a very curious effect. Okay, so that's for the bonus file. My childhood comforter. The disembodied arm. You know, this story kind of frustrates me, angers me a bit. I don't have kids, but if I do, when I do, uh, hopefully, <laughs> I, I think it's very important to ever fight in front of your kids because it makes them feel unsafe and unstable. It's like in the military, you don't have commanding officers or two higher ranking officers like the commander, the captain of the ship, and his subordinate directly below his second in command arguing with each other. You don't want that. You want to know that the, the ship is being led properly and there's a clear direction and, and unity in thought. Like, you're always going to have disagreements, but you should try to keep them civil. And if it's not possible to be civil, at least don't do it in front of your kids, is my, my belief. I think that's, it sets a wrong message to them and also makes them feel unsafe. I'm lucky. My parents never, they argued sometimes, but it was never, you know, fiery or anything like that. Just disagreements, but they kept it civil, which is important. Or if they ever argued more than that, they, they didn't do it in front of me, which I appreciate. Now, about the actual story, the glitch or paranormal supernatural event, was it just a spirit that was able to phase through and touch? Maybe someone uh, related to your family that was indeed, it doesn't sound like they were trying to scare you, it was meant for comfort. To explain why the hand was white or pale, it may be related to how they died, if they drowned or something like that. I imagine there would be carryover in that way. The soul is project its final state on the world. The last reverberation echoes and remains, lingers behind in that state. Case notes are file 962. Infinite potato and cheese quesadillas. So my first thought was, are these quesadillas that you're eating going inside your stomach? Obviously you swallow them, they're no longer on the plate. But then do they, does a food mass disappear, vanish from your stomach? I guess you probably would have felt that, but maybe not. I mean, those aren't exactly the most filling or expansive kind of food. I could eat uh, quite a few without cheese, of course. Evil cheese. Terrible. No! Uh, anyways, does the food mass actually just vanish from your stomach? Dave always wants to fall off. And then reappear as like this mush in a different universe? And in that universe, the copy of you that's eating is just having his uh, quesadillas vanish in different multiple copies. And of course, over there, he's trying to explain to his aunt and his family that my quesadillas, I'm, I'm hungry, they're just vanishing. It's not my fault. <laughs> That would suck. <laughs> you you got the better end if this is what's happening. Now regarding the movie glitch, I can't comment too much specifically on this one. I don't really watch that many modern movies anymore. Some TV shows, uh, Reacher is really good on Prime if you haven't seen it. I do recommend that. I did however narrate another story a while back about someone who had visions of a TV show that hadn't aired yet. I believe it was Stargate actually. He knew what it was going to be years before it even aired. So I mean, obviously before there could be any possibility of early streaming or anything like that. There was no streaming back then in the 90s, but he just knew what was going to happen as, a, as if he watched it ahead of time. In fact, I think it was. It wasn't just a, a premonition, it was pure foresight. He experienced the whole thing. Like Nicolas Cage in, in Next. I mean, I keep coming back to that movie because that's a good movie. <laughs> Very related to potential things that could happen in the buffered reality I think we live in. All that information's there. Just have to access it and enable our mind to process it. That's probably the, the real issue. The information is all floating out there. Like all the signals that our phones receive, it's all there. It's just encrypted. Our phone needs that specific encryption key to decode it and then use the information. So for some reason, some minds have the ability to decode that information that's just floating everywhere. And in those cases, for specific bits of information, they unlock the world in the future. It's really cool. Case notes for file 963. The man outside of time. Given that he recognized you, maybe it was the soul of your grandfather? The way he acted was almost as if he was prompting you to go into that direction of being a businesswoman. I don't know, I get that, that feeling for some reason. Maybe that's where you'll end up. This is like a, a future push in that direction. But I do believe there is some sort of timeline uh, phenomena going on here. 
I don't think it was a ghost. I think it was a, especially because he carried your briefcase so easily, it feels like it was too real. There was a real manifestation of a person there, even if it wasn't from your timeline. I don't know if it was your grandfather, I don't know if it was someone else, a friend from the future. Maybe even to him, you looked older, and it was just a normal interaction, and he knew you, you know, like you said, I don't think it was a pickup artist <laughs> trick. Didn't seem very good, especially if he just disappeared right after, right? That doesn't work well. If you're just gonna run away, yeah, maybe he got nervous. More likely that it was some timeline figure. Case notes are file 964. Gordon, the man trapped between two worlds. Ghosts really are freaking real, man. I hope one day people won't feel this pressure of ridicule for coming forward and revealing their stories. I think more and more people are becoming open to it and less fearful, especially with the internet and anonymous accounts, it's pretty easy to do. But even people just having their real names and sharing stories directly with me to tell you guys. It's its pretty cool that people are becoming open to it. I think uh, the only way we're going to find out what's really going on is if people are willing to share their experiences, their accounts of the world. And I always am curious about people who don't want to give stories like this the benefit of the doubt. I mean, do some people make them up for, I don't know, attention? Possibly. But most? I don't think so. I think most are... They really did happen to the people, at least from their perspective. Did they imagine it? Hallucinate it? Maybe sometimes, but I think most people really happened to them. I mean, really, do you want to live in a world that doesn't have this kind of... Eh, kind of boring to me. But then again, I don't believe any of this is magic or supernatural in the sense that most people think of supernatural. I don't think it's beyond the possibility of understanding. I guess going back to that exact place in the cellar, Maybe you'd find Gordon again. And Gordon seems like a bright old chap. I hope he's not too lonely. Case notes are file 965. The mysterious penny that defies physics. I think all bills, US currency denominated bills, have a serial number trackable. Not sure about pennies though. It'd be interesting if you could track the serial number of a penny if they had one. I don't even keep change so I can't check. If they did, I wonder if it would be a duplicate in this universe, if there would be another one with the same exact markings. It was just a penny from a different universe that just popped over here. It's a lot of accounts of things that are just materializing over here in our universe from a higher elevation. So not just, you know, popping into the floor. I guess it makes sense. Of any place you could appear, it's far more likely it'd be an open space and then f falling to the ground. But if I had to guess, that would be just it. A duplication event, but it's really probably a multiversal transposition effect. <laughs> so many effects. Case notes are file 966. Nothing better than free milk. Personally, I prefer cashew over almond milk. It's more mellow, more usable for most things. And honestly, it's just flat out better than dairy, like animal dairy for, for me. I've always hated cheese, I know, crazy. Dairy free has been very easy for me. And yeah, you should try cashew milk if you haven't. It's very low in calories too, which is another plus. And while still being extremely creamy. Although I'm not sure how it takes into milk or hot beverages. I always take my coffee black. I would just chalk this up to another duplication event, multiversal transposition effect, where milk in a different universe came over here for whatever reason. Seems to be happening very frequently now. I wonder why. Universal instability in the back of my head. <laughs> I'd rather not think about that. Case notes for file 967. My unbreakable shirt. So there have been more reports lately about things that are just fixing themselves. There was a door that fixed themselves. There were glasses before. Now a shirt. There was another story about another different shirt entirely that was repairing itself. Although not so immediately. Is it a different shirt from a different universe that's just being transposed over? Or is the universe rewinding time for that localized area? And why? Is it just an error, a random occurrence, for no particular reason, or is there a point to it? It's like a universal reset button. Wouldn't mind having it. Case notes for file 968. The tooth that returned. We're growing teeth. I think it's something to do with stem cells, or... I don't know if it happens organically. I know obviously we lose our teeth as uh, kids, entering into uh, teenage years, and they grow back. But it's pretty slow, and sometimes painful as well. So no, I don't think I've ever heard of a tooth growing back overnight like that. That's pretty incredible. So are we dealing with a case where in one universe, you just, a copy of you lost their tooth. The tooth literally vanished and then reappeared in you, entered into the gum line exactly? Why would the tooth not appear just on your bed or somewhere else? Like in that exact spot, it seems 
directed, if that's what happened. And I hope it's certainly not, because that means we can just, anything can disappear, including like our organs or teeth or our tongue, just randomly goes missing one day. Let's hope that isn't the case, and it's something else, something new. I want my organs to remain in my body. <laughs> case notes for file 969. Security footage from another universe. So a quick side note, because you mentioned that your husband takes a bus. Since being in the US, I've noticed a severe lack of public transportation. Back in Montreal, buses ran like every 10 minutes everywhere, and of course you could take the metro, the subway. I think New York City is pretty good on public transport. I guess it's because it was designed before cars became prevalent. Nothing against cars necessarily, it's just it's very hard to get anywhere unless you have a car in most places. Unfortunate, I would say. I think cars make more sense for traveling outside of cities or towns, but inside towns probably should be designed more for pedestrians. That would be ideal. Better quality of life instead of all these strodes everywhere. Very ugly, if you ask me. Also, I'm very grumpy when I first wake up as well. If I wake up without at least 7 hours of sleep, and even then, if I wake up, I need like 30 minutes, take a shower, decompress, have my coffee, anything before that, and I'm not exactly safe to be around. I just realized I forgot to include Dave. He was uh, a little upset with me, but I, he's okay now. We had a talk, it's all good. And also it's been a long time since I was uh, sprayed by a skunk. It happened back in uh, Montreal, Terrebonne, maybe seven years ago by this point. Nothing really worked besides one thing, laundry detergent and baking soda. If you put that in the washing machine with those two ingredients right away, then it does neutralize the oils whatever the skunk spray is. And apparently tomato sauce can work too. I'm not sure about that. I think I heard that on Seinfeld. No, that was for body odor. And your husband, Daniel, sounds like a very protective kind of husband. It's an admirable trait. Making sure you're home safe. I would probably be similar to that. Now for the glitch itself, I don't think it's the camera losing frames or anything. I've watched uh, the video a few times now. And if you look at it, everything seems to be in sync and flowing normally. There was a car that passes by, no missing skipped frames there. If you look at the lamps and some of the lights, they pulsate at regular intervals. There's nothing missing as far as I can tell. So I don't think the camera footage was corrupted or anything like that. Or did the camera not process your dog because he was too dark? I don't think so. I mean, you clearly see Rio as he gets out of the car and then runs off. So what's going on here? Did your camera footage capture a parallel reality? We know that we can perceive other realities multiversal peering without actually being there. Why couldn't a camera do that? I think that would be evidence though that it's not related to our soul. Like quantum immortality is our soul moving between universes, but this, maybe it's some kind of space-time warped anomaly? Instead of moving through space-time in our universe, it's enabling a connection of for sight and sound to this parallel reality. First story I've read like this, very interesting. And with security camera footage too. Case notes are file 970. My self-cleaning bedroom. So you have a curious shift, that uh, time slot finishing at 2 in the morning. When I was back in Montreal, I worked as a doorman, security guard doorman, just night watchman basically for a condo unit, downtown Montreal. And I would finish at like 8 in the morning. Well, I'd get home at 8, I'd finish at 7. Had to take the metro home, but I love it. I'm a night owl, I really am. What can I say? But yeah, odd shift. At least you get home before there's light out. You can make something of it work, like you get home at 3 and you wake up at, I don't know, 11 or 12. More normal-ish, still functional. <laughs> when you wake up at 3 or 4 in the afternoon, it becomes hard to function because everything closes so damn early, especially now. You know, where are the Walmarts that are open 24-7 and all that? Everything's just closing early now. The last three years were used as an excuse to completely shutter down anything to do with uh, night owls. Uh, what can you do? But my guess this would be related to, again, multiversal peering. You saw your room cleaned in a different universe, and the one you still inhabit, it was messy. Maybe in the other universe, it was cleaned by your roommate, and that would explain why it was cleaned in a way and organized where it wasn't like you cleaned it. I don't think you would be different enough to arrange your room in a different way after you clean it in a different universe. So it probably was your roommate, just not the one that you know. <laughs> I'm gonna go get a snack now. Not sure what I should eat. Banana, apple, burritos. Burritos can be a snack, right? We'll go with that. Like the video, subscribe, hit the bell, good stuff. Visit my Patreon if you want. I have 27 stories. Well, actually, no. Yeah, 27 stories from when this goes live.
Uh, the latest one is about an autopsy recounting gruesome events, but it's very sad. Compelling story though, really. Case notes for file 971. I was stalked by a feline imposter. Honestly, it's not too surprising that the cat could keep up with you, if it was a cat. Cats are surprisingly agile and fast. I mean, we all know they have really quick reaction times, but no, they're just extremely fast. Um, I'm not sure if they could outrun a dog, I wonder, what their top speed is, but it's, it's fast enough to keep up with a human. Maybe you're not Usain Bolt, but outside of that, sure. But yeah, the, the way you describe the cat does seem supernatural, doesn't it? Especially in its ability to know where you're going to go. Like, yeah, cats can smell a human, so maybe that's how, but it seemed too precise and too quick, right? Like scaling and going behind the, the townhouse so quickly in like 10 seconds for you to go to, to the living room to the kitchen area. That's uh, very spooky. How you describe it looking too. I wonder, was it possessed? Can cats, pets become possessed? I guess I don't see why not. If cats have a soul, and in fact maybe it has nothing to do with a soul. Maybe if you're possessed, it's, a, it's about suppressing a, any soul that exists there. But maybe anything can be possessed. I mean, yeah. You have stories about dolls being possessed, not just in movies, but in a creepy reality too. Whatever cat soul was inside his body was suppressed and this was deforming it. Maybe it was even keeping it alive, but not really alive. Maybe it was dead and was just this animated body. Or maybe it was just a really lonely cat. And as you say, maybe he was uh, abused and just wound up in this state. Very sad either way, if you ask me. I definitely do get creepy vibes from this, so... I would keep my distance, hopefully it never comes back. Case notes are file 972. The Umbrella Connection. I'm wondering, did you subconsciously hum the song? Or maybe tap your thigh to the rhythm of the song? Anything like that? Because people can pick up on it and sometimes we'll hum along or move our bodies to the rhythm of a song or anything subconscious without even realizing it. And maybe this person was approaching you and just picked that up subconsciously as well. And that's why she said Umbrella. And it is an extremely popular song, or at least it was, but it's well known, I would say. So given all of that, my guess would be along those lines, but it's not inconceivable that your mind was so attuned and thinking so strongly about this that it did impart some knowledge or at least a sensation in her mind. Can we link our minds, our souls, connected like that? I think so. And it may tether along with remote viewing. It's all down to the soul. The soul is capable of more than we are consciously aware of. Sometimes. Sometimes we can be consciously aware of it, but if we're able to astrally project, why not be one with the soul that's projected forward? Or that part of it, anyways. Because it's not the whole soul, I think it's just a small fragment of it. Like tossing out a drone to go and scout for you. Well, sort of that, but metaphysical. And in this case, I think your minds were connected, even loosely. Just enough where that little fragment of your song imparted into her, and obviously she knew the song and that carried forward. I want an umbrella now, <laughs> even though it's not raining. And it's definitely happened to me too. I felt like I knew something about someone else or what they were going to say, like with my mom. If I was in the kitchen making a sandwich, I knew she was going to say something and what it was going to be before she even said it. But it almost is so normal, and I think most people feel this way, that I didn't even consider it a glitch, but thinking about it, yeah. There's many cases, mostly with people I've known significantly, not just random strangers. But I guess there's a, a meshing, like a Wi-Fi established link that has to connect. Maybe sometimes it can connect with strangers if the signal is strong enough, boosted for some reason. Maybe depending on the environment. And comes the end of the video. You know what to do. I don't even have to tell you, right? We're mind linked right now. Just do what you know I want you to do. Hmm. Case notes are file 973. My daughter knew I was pregnant before I did. Boy, this is one of the more remarkable stories I have ever narrated. I think it's fair to say that children have a special connection with the world, or maybe it's better to say they have a um, specific attunement to the whole universe. They're able to comprehend and perceive it in ways that we can't. The information that's there is accessible. Like in this case, your daughter knew that you had another daughter. The package of the story is absolutely spectacular. And I'm very happy for all of you, including your daughter, who uh, <laughs> really did want a sister. Case file number 974. Cross the street to reset time. Yeah, this sounds like a, a reset of your brain function. If we're in a simulation, 
there would be a button that they can press in the real world where it controls a connection to our inhabited body, the soul to the body. If you just hit a certain button, you can rewind it to a certain level in the buffered reality. So the button is pressed and you are seamlessly in your mind from your perspective, simply rewinded and walking, still walking, but perpendicular to the road that you were trying to get to. If we live in a buffered reality, a buffered universe, then it's as simple as rewinding a movie. Now if we don't, that's where this kind of glitch is just mind-blowing on another level, and we may never know exactly. But it won't stop us from speculating, right Dave? What do you think? I think he agrees. <laughs> Speculations. Whoops, that's his butt. <laughs> Speculations will continue. Case notes are file 975. From snow, he went into the void. So first I would say Pepsi, really? Eh. Coke is better, and honestly the MVP S-tier soda is Dr. Pepper. It is the best. I have uh, some Dr. Pepper right here. <laughs> Dr. Pepper Zero, red and black version. Slightly sweeter than the white and red. I drink diet always, but it's good. <laughs> Try it if you haven't. And yes, the back rooms. What a terrifying concept. I'm not sure if it's entirely fictional, or I believe there are people who claim to have actually been there and escaped. I don't know, it sounds more like a creepypasta to me, but just the idea that it could be real. That one minute you just wake up in the back rooms that are an infinite maze seemingly of like white and grayish, brownish, disgusting crap. You're just stuck there in this like office maze with apparently dangerous creatures inhabiting it. I don't want to go there. Kinda sounds like purgatory. Limbo. Now for the glitch, I'm wondering if he, the man that uh, you saw, well, didn't see but believed to have vanished, from his mind, did he simply move forward in space-time? Or is it like the last glitch, where he simply reset in time? His consciousness wouldn't just have reset, his entire body would have as well. Would it be from your perspective? If someone is rewound, they simply vanish from your perspective. Because we don't all have to be playing the buffered reality game from the same point. Could just be watching a movie from different points in time, like skipping ahead in a video. If that's the case, a lot of vanishment could simply be alterations to the program, depending on where we are in it. But if not that, it could simply just be a space-time anomaly. Not as common when they're walking, but they do happen all the time now. For him, he may just have taken a step and then taken another and be a mile or 10 miles or 100 miles away. Hell, I wonder if this happens where people literally warp from one country to another and don't have their passport or anything and they can't even get back. That would be uh, awkward trying to get to the embassy. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know how I got here. I mean, I kind of just teleported. Maybe they'd commit him to a psych ward or something. <laughs> and another triple stories down. Almost to a thousand. Getting there. It's very exciting. Like the video, subscribe, hit the bell. See you tomorrow. Case notes are file 976. The traffic lights that froze the world. Yeah, the story about a woman being taken from her car and beat just because of a traffic situation. I swear people go absolutely insane when behind the wheel of a car, or any vehicle I guess. Something like a actual possession going on. Vehicular possession. <laughs> now if there's an actual spirit responsible for that or just human nature, when you're behind the wheel of uh, something so powerful, you're mi you just lose your mind. I don't know. I don't really like to drive myself. There's just something kind of crazy taking for granted the fact that you're driving around in a ton of steel going at 60 or over miles an hour. A single mistake and you kill yourself or someone else just in a flash. It's kind of crazy if you think about it. I prefer motorcycles because there's less risk to other people. You know one thing I'm very excited about is a Tesla, well it's not just Tesla but they're the pioneers really for self-driving cars. I don't want it to be mandatory. If people want to drive themselves that's cool but for other people like myself who'd rather just be driven, that's very cool. Just punch in where you want to go and it does all the work. Level 5 autonomous driving. You know, you can uh, put on a movie, go to sleep, wake up and you're at your destination. That's awesome. Actually kind of a tangent just real quick. Uh, Tesla is designing automatic plug-in robots. Basically you pull up to a charging station and there's a robotic arm that will plug into the car automatically. So you can plug, it your, plug in your route pay for the electricity in advance, and it'll self-drive the whole way and even charge itself along the way. That's pretty damn amazing. I can't wait until that's a reality. It's still probably 5 to 10 years away, but it'll get there. Anyways, moving on to the actual glitch here. 
What I wonder is if it's just down to perception. What was the perception of the people in the cars around you? Did they perceive the same thing like you were stuck and not moving? Whereas everyone else was just normal flow? Or they just didn't realize anything odd happened at all? In one instant it was normal, red light, and then it was green? To them there was no difference. Maybe it's just down to perception. There was some, some kind of anomaly that affected the people in that area. But not across the street. That traffic was flowing normally. So everyone in the area around you was affected by some sort of space-time warping that reduced the flow of time. But only from the perspective of outsiders, not within real time. The problem is there's no absolute time, which is a hard concept to grasp your head around. Even now, I don't really understand it myself, not intuitively. It doesn't really make sense. But I think the best way to, the best way to phrase it is that perception is king. So there is objective reality, but how we perceive it can affect everything for us. Because of course, regardless of what objective reality is, we can only see it and f feel it from our own senses unless we devise other mechanisms to uh, observe it, take data. Case notes are file 977, free medicine. Yeah, not too much to say on this one. I would say um, it's awesome that you got free medication, especially given that wherever you live, you can't get extra for whatever reason. Uh, you have to wait until you only have two weeks left, which seems dangerous to me. At least bump it up to a month, but I guess now you don't have to worry about that. You have a perpetual buffer of at least a couple months now, or a month and a half or something. Very good. Happy for you on that. It does seem more directed, willed, than just random duplication event. So maybe there was some force that directed you to have extra. Maybe you'll need it in the future. Keep it on you. It's almost dinner time for me, so that's exciting. I'll have something tonight with uh, mashed potatoes and gravy. Yeah. <laughs> like the video, subscribe, hit the bell. See you tomorrow. Case notes for file 978. My voice said something else. This is a tiny glitch, but quite a mind bender, isn't it? Wonder, would this be related to a parallel universe crossover? Just information? So you connected to a call, uh, and we're talking to your wife, but from a different universe. And then over here, she said hello, and over there she said hey. A tiny difference, but given you're connected to different universes in a sense, that would be uh, mind-blowing indeed. I can't really think of anything else that would affect the call that way. Because it's not like your wife was a, had a distorted voice on the phone and you just misheard between hello and hey, that's quite a difference. I don't think there's a tech glitch that would be uh, able to cause that, unless it was intentional, like someone trying to forge the voice of your wife, but obviously there's no reason to do that now and no way to do it because she called your phone. The only thing I can think of is that multiverse action is involved here. Case notes for the creepy file number 77. We encountered the men in white. So this is very strange. The field is barren, nothing's growing there. But the descriptions you give is similar to like uh, pesticide sprayers. Like you can get crop dusters, planes that fly over, but I guess other people would just use actual humans that directly spray it on the field. But if it's barren, nothing is planted. I mean, there's no reason to use pesticides on anything. It would just waste money, right? Do you lay it beforehand on a field before you plant something? I'm not a farmer, I wouldn't know, but I don't think you do. What about the people picking up like you said, hot coals from the, the ground? Wonder what that's involved. Like, maybe debris from a crashed ship? And maybe what those men were spraying was to disinfect the area, or decontaminate it from radiation or something. Maybe they don't know if there was or not, but that would be my guess. These are alien recovery specialists, if a ship crashes. And I mean, it's not inconceivable. Even if aliens are here, and they have advanced technology, it doesn't mean they're infallible and there's never any errors. Could a ship eventually, for some reason, crash? Yeah, I would say it's unlikely, but it's certainly possible. And in those cases, I guess it depends on the arrangement they have with our governments. Uh, do the governments actually know that aliens are here? Did they make that clear to uh, the people in charge? Or maybe not. Maybe they don't care. And in that case, you know, the ship has crashed. But it's not like the world will know from a single crash ship that's easily suppressed. And obviously, you didn't see an actual ship, so whatever was, if this is what happened, whatever was there, whatever ship or debris from a ship, maybe it was even like a satellite from an alien craft or something. And from that, they were able to recover most of it before you came back through the field. I really hope one day, I encounter an alien. Because I don't think they're evil. If they intended us harm, we wouldn't be around to speculate. 
Case notes for the bonus file, the faceless river entity. So there was a comment from someone else in the thread that mentioned that this could be a Nopera bow, supposedly a Katsune that's disguising itself as a faceless entity, and it's usually found near rivers. Indeed, this has nothing to do with uh, Overwatch. <laughs> There's a short story about this that I read, and it's pretty fascinating. Folktale level stuff, and I want to recite it here for you. Let me know what you think about this. This tale recounts of a lazy fisherman who decided to fish in the imperial koi ponds near the Haiyan Kaio Palace, despite being warned by his wife about the pond being sacred and near a graveyard. The fisherman went anyway. On his way to the pond, he is warned by another fisherman not to go there, but again he ignores the warning. Once at the spot, he is met with a beautiful young woman who pleads with him not to fish in the pond. He ignores her and to his horror, she wipes off her face. Rushing home to hide, he is confronted by what seems to be his wife, who chastises him for his wickedness before wiping off her facial features as well. A kind of torment into social purgatory, it sounds like. Heed the warnings, I say. Case notes for file 979. We both heard a blast that never happened. So this actually sounds very similar to exploding head syndrome, a well- So that, those would be my guesses, ball lightning, Exploding Head Syndrome, Connection. Case notes are found 980. Someone helped my doppelganger. So people do get confused at times and think someone looks very similar to someone else, but they're not. I mean, if you study witness accounts in the courts, witness testimony is actually pretty low on the totem pole of evidence because our minds can reconstruct things. We can truly believe something to be true, remember it a certain way, and it's nothing like that at all. So there is something there. However, the fact that your name was also the same and you live in the general vicinity, that pushes us well into glitch territory because it's not just someone that thinks, oh yeah, you look very similar. No, it was your name too. The odds of that, so, so low. Not impossible, but extremely unlikely to just be mundane. There is also astral projection, which I'm always curious about. Is this a doppelganger or is it you constantly astrally projecting yourself and almost living another life in a different town? I wonder to what extent it can go because we know astral projections can interact with the world to a sufficient degree to if they're walking, they'll create steps, they'll be interacting directly with the ground floor enough to create auditory reverberations in the atmosphere to produce sound. So we know that astral projections can, they manifest to an extent that's more than a ghost. So to what extent, what is the limit on that? Could they live an entirely ordinary life or a lot of people just projecting themselves around and like going about their day? To what extent would they know that they're an astral projection? Because they can't eat or drink, presumably, right? If it's just their soul. Very interesting concept though. Imagine one day you realize you just are a projection of someone else. It's definitely not me because I eat all the time, so I'm very real, I think. Case notes are file 981. My cousin paid us a visit, but it wasn't her. So I don't think we can discount common medical conditions, even just stress, where it can induce memory loss or acting like you're someone else, do a split personality disorder. But given this only happened once, as far as I can tell from the story, I'm probably going to discount that and I may actually just refer to the past story where maybe it involves astral projection again. Maybe your cousin was in a distraught state for some reason, or even from a different universe. There's, there's potential where maybe we can astrally project Parallel universe over, one skip over. I don't know to how many, you know, how many layers of universes we could go to. I think there is a possibility that we could be transposed over without even realizing it. So maybe it was astral projection from your cousin from a different universe and obviously a different life in that universe. So that's why she was acting differently. In that universe, maybe she doesn't have some uh, ritual routine as she comes and goes, you know, call ahead, get the coffee, hug you. So maybe that routine doesn't exist there and that's why she was behaving differently. Different life entirely. I think it fits pretty well because our soul is not tethered to one universe. That's very clear with quantum immortality. I wonder to what extent it goes. Case notes are file 982. The Interstellar Gas Station. I believe that cell phones will read SOS if they're unable to connect to a normal tower. Effectively, it just means that it's an emergency feature. It'll force the phone to connect to any network if there's an emergency 911 call going through, even if it's not on your plan. So that in of itself isn't really that odd. Although, I mean, given the area, I'm assuming you've been there before, given you know the clerk, or the clerk that's supposed to be there, the five of them. 
So the fact that you should have self-signal there, but you don't, is odd, in of itself. And then compounded by the fact that both your debit and credit card from a different bank, issued from a different bank, didn't work. To me, this implies that you're not in the same universe, even though it's a parallel universe that is very similar. The SIM encryption on your cell phone, the SIM card encryption, as well as the encryption on your cards, would still differ between universes, even if they're almost identical. It's so hyper-specific that they would still be different. It would explain why the cards wouldn't work, and it would explain why your cell phone wasn't able to connect to any network. The only thing I can't explain is why the pump didn't work after you paid the cashier. Because if you're in a different universe, you're still interacting with the people there, and the pump should have worked. So, I mean, maybe that could just be a coincidence. Maybe in that universe, that clerk was lazy or incompetent and activated the wrong pump. So effectively, universal crossover, for some reason, combined with laziness, or a mistake. I could see it. Case notes for the bonus file. The man addicted to electricity. So I just want to say first off that having been homeless myself a decade ago, over a decade now, it's very wholesome that you gave your friend a place to stay. You know, obviously as a roommate situation, you're still paying rent, but it can be difficult to find a place that you, you know, you trust someone to stay with. Now to the story, you know something just clicked in my brain as I was reading this. When you mentioned electrical cords and chargers, if spirits are fragments of souls, then presumably they still require some, some semblance of energy to uh, reverberate, continue their existence within the realm, or maybe they require energy to phase into our dimensional pocket. Without it, maybe they can't do much. So in a sense, spirits would be drawn to that kind of energy, electricity, maybe other sources, heat, light. My guess though is, it's like a battery. They can be charged and it can last for a long time. So obviously, there's plenty of accounts of spirits appearing where there's no obvious source of energy. So I think it's a, a charge that's needed, but not necessarily in the moment. It can be carried over with them. And it would also explain why, in cases where there's lights on or other electronics active, if a spirit is nearby, often the lights will flicker, electronics will stop to work, and it's simply a voltage drop because the spirit is literally drawing power from the circuit. That's a really interesting idea. <laughs> it just kind of clicked in me. I don't know if it's true, but it kind of fits, doesn't it? Time for the daily story. Or quote. I'll try to phase these in. During the gold rush, a man who had been mining in Colorado for several months quit his job, as he hadn't struck gold yet, and the work was becoming tiresome. He sold his equipment to another man who resumed mining where he had left off. The new miner was advised by his engineer that there was gold only three feet away from where the first miner stopped digging. The engineer was right, which means the first miner was a mere three feet away from striking gold before he quit. Now, the moral of the story, of course, is when things get hard, it can be so easy to quit, but you might just be a few feet away from gold. So no matter how hard things get, continue to persevere. It's worth it. Case notes are file 983, the voicemail from another universe. So I think the obvious answer people would give to this is that the man butt dialed you, but he was just rehearsing, interacting with you because, you know, he wanted to close the deal. So it would make sense that he would rehearse his uh, pitch, basically. It's probably something I would do myself being an introvert. <laughs> I like to plan my social interactions. It's the plight of the introvert, but I like who I am. Now, it doesn't quite add up as simply as that because he knew intimate details about you, like you having been on maternity leave and other details uh, that shouldn't be possible to know. I mean, unless he stalked you on Facebook and LinkedIn and other sites like that, it's conceivable maybe he could find a lot of details, but not to that extent, I don't think. And then later on sending emails in a sense that, you know, if it was a call attempt, why would he rehearse over the phone? And then it also means that he had your number saved in his phone to have accidentally butt dialed you? Hmm. No, I think it's actually more likely it's just a jumbling of the information that's out there. It's energy. Signals that we interact with through our phones, the calls. It's just specific organization of vibrations and waves that we're able to decode on our phone. Who's to say they can't travel between parallel universes? It explains a lot of weird stuff, if you uh, grant that axiom. Case notes are file 984. Their faces kept changing. I've read a few comments saying this might be propopagnosia, which is a condition where people aren't able to accurately uh, comprehend faces. They can't place faces. Everyone looks basically the same. One face is interchangeable with the next one. But then I don't think that fits, because if you weren't able to discern one face from another, one person from another, 
It wouldn't be that faces are changing, it's just that you wouldn't be able to recognize anyone, by their facial features anyways. Also, you indicated their voice changes, their height, everything, so it's not just their face. This reminds me of a story where there was a uh, person ac living across the street, husband and wife. I'm not sure, I think one of them was a cop. But anyways, one day came home and the wife was a different person entirely. Before she was tall and then she was slender after, shorter, not just a different hair color or anything like that. The only possible thing is witness protection, but that wouldn't really apply in the job. You wouldn't have to switch persons in the job, they would just quit and go live somewhere else in witness protection. So yeah, I'm not sure where this glitch would fall. It wouldn't be quantum immortality because it's happening so frequently to you, not just one person, unless you're dying so often that you're switching universes like changing clothes. I suppose some people might perish often and then wind up in different universes all the time. That would be unsettling without really understanding what's going on. Case notes for the bonus file. The darkness was impersonating my mom. So here's the real rub of the story, the real question. Was this your mom astrally projecting a couple times? Or was it an actual entity trying to lure you into darkness? Both times it was luring you into a spot where there was no visible light. I don't think it was your mom in that case. The story gives me the creeps, to be honest. I don't know what the entity wanted to do with you, but nothing good, I suspect. And this is coming from an eternal optimist, so yeah. It's odd though that the entity never tried to lure you anywhere again after that. I wonder why they stopped. Maybe there is a, an aspect of energy, like I mentioned the other day. Maybe they require a lot of energy to phase into this pocket dimension and they can't sustain it forever. And maybe they don't want to be known or alert anyone so they wouldn't try to draw it from the circuitry in the home or anything like that, give away their position, and then maybe have to suffer a cleansing. And now for the quote of the day. If you're going through hell, keep going. Winston Churchill. Case notes are file 985. The Ketchup Mind Meld. I do believe we have a link. I like to refer to it as a Wi-Fi, spiritual, metaphysical Wi-Fi connection between people that are important to us. I think it depends greatly on how often we specifically think about that person or they think about us. It reinforces the synapses in our brains and therefore reinforces the connection itself. Think of it as a the strength of the Wi-Fi connection. I also don't think it necessarily means that both people have to be thinking about each other. I think it can be a one-way street. In this case, you were talking with your dad about ketchup and it triggered an instinctual knowledge base in your mom, thinking, oh yeah, we're out of ketchup. Best alert them because they're out now and they can stop and get it. Fair enough. Also, I'm very confused. You don't like ketchup? What is this? Ketchup is great. It's sweet, but has acidity, so it's, it's well balanced. It's a naturally balanced condiment. Like mustard is great too because it's low calorie, but it's not very balanced. It's very potent. You don't want too much. Just a bit. Ketchup though. Slather that on to no end. <laughs> Case notes for creepy file number 78, The Road of Nightmares. Well, I certainly believe you encounter entirely. The way it's all described, I certainly hope it doesn't come back to haunt you again. It's interesting that you were able to damage it though. I don't know if it's biblical, but at least your weapon worked. And now for the quote of the day. Nothing in the world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than unsuccessful men with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Education will not. The world is full of educated derelicts. Persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. The slogan, press on, has solved and always will solve the problems of the human race. Calvin Coolidge. Honestly, one of the more underrated US presidents, in my opinion. More of a hands-off kind of guy. I like that. Case notes for file 986. The elderly couple with superhuman powers. So I wonder, from their perspective, did anything strange happen? Were they zapped forward in time? Or in this case, in space? There's a few reports this past week where people are just zapped back in time or in space, especially in the stories I've read personally, but not on the channel. And it's returning to that thing I mentioned, that sometimes there are just patterns that I notice. I don't know if they're relevant. Again, it could just be seeing a face in the clouds, you know. But it's very interesting. Seems the most likely explanation is they interacted with a space-time portal that just zipped them to the end of the path. But why so specific? You know, why to the end of the path and not in the water, the ocean, to another country, to, you know, anywhere? <laughs> it's almost like they're placed there by a developer of the game. Very peculiar. Case notes are file 987. 
The Ghost Family. Well, I would have to agree with one commenter that I saw. It's all about the old lady. The family itself sounds very physical, corporeal. No issues there. Is it actually a ghost family? Hmm, maybe not. The old lady though, maybe was a lost relative that died in that area, but it sounds like they were renters, so maybe not. Maybe it was just someone that had died in that area that didn't realize they were dead and answered the door as if to just greet a person that would come. Of course, to their perspective, no one else lives there. It sounds like a confused spirit. Not malicious, just confused. Also, just to say, I'm very impressed that you decided to go out of your way to try to bring these people, this family that forgot an item, their missing item. You know, not many people would do that. Again, I mentioned it before, but I think not enough people are taking pride in their work. It doesn't matter what you do. Do you clean offices or mop floors or flip burgers or deliver groceries or whatever it is you do? You should take pride in what you do. It's important. Not just for, your, for other people, but for yourself as well. It's a certain lack of hope, I think, that's uh, especially prevalent over the past three years. Like a cloud of miasma that descended upon the world and people haven't mentally recovered yet, it seems. I hope they do. We have to be more responsible and care for each other. Otherwise, what's the point? Case notes, the zebra man. So I just want to say that I know that lifestyle where you're poor growing up. I wasn't as poor as this where there was no electricity and had to get light through candles like living in the 1800s. But it wasn't, you know, fancy dinners or anything like that. We moved uh, constantly around. I don't know, I've moved probably 20 times before I was 18. It builds character. It makes you appreciate what's important. What more could you want from growing up? Love and character. And this really brings back vibes of Baphomet. Legends speak of it in many different forms. It's not just a biblical entity, but it's this, this idea, the concept of evil or trickery or inverting reality. The Zebraman is kind of describing that, in my opinion. Was it a demon? Was it an outward manifestation of your own inner turmoil? I couldn't really say for sure, but it's very creepy. The fact it wasn't able to enter the door that was closed, it was almost like a vampire story where it has to be invited in. There's a cosmic law, I guess you could say, regarding that. And then I also wonder, you say you felt inner peace, uh, a peace, a tranquility, after this being left. Maybe it was because you found your inner peace that it left. And before that, it wasn't what was causing that turmoil, but you had to fight it off, face your demons, as it were, first. Hmm. Case notes are file 988. I spent four years living in an alternate universe. Honestly, I think most people would probably just brush this off because of your mental diagnoses, but I think there's more to it than that. In fact, I think your diagnoses, these disorders, aren't the cause, they're just symptoms of your mind not adapting properly to quantum shifts in your consciousness. And this is something I've wondered for quite a while. Does the blending of a soul into a new host in a new universe, quantum immortality, does that always go over smoothly? Are there never any hiccups, any rejections from the host body? We know that physically, if you have to get a transplant from an organ, say you uh, lose your liver or any other organ really, even blood I think, the body will often reject that new organ because it sees it as foreign, and it is. Now, the closer you are genetically, so a family connection is important if it's a twin, there's almost no rejection there, but even then, often there is some. You have to take anti-rejection drugs. And I think in that same sense, even though we're switching to a copy of ourselves, there still are bound to be some differences. Perhaps depending on how great the differences are, the soul will reject the blending, or at least may not be able to properly fuse together. And this could lead to disassociation and other mental illnesses. So maybe we've been diagnosing symptoms of quantum immortality going awry. Just a thought. Case notes to the creepy file number 79. A dog-like monster stalks me. So whenever there are creepy monsters that are described in a story or an experience, like the one where the person was driving along and they encountered a kind of tall beast-like monster that had a manifested fog or was within fog, whenever anything like that happens, or in this case where it's a dog-like monster that can vanish, I often wonder if it's a corporeal being. Is it an actual monster, just something we've never seen before? that inhabits a new species of animal? In this case, because it can vanish, it makes me think that it's some entity that's playing with your mind, maybe a spirit in this case, something that wants to terrify you 
and make you feel uneasy in general, but isn't real in the physical sense, very real in the energy sense. Given you were never attacked, it may not necessarily be malicious or like outright demonic evil, but just wanting to terrify you. So I guess still evil, but not as evil as it can get. Case notes for the bonus file. Pointed horror. So people will often say that having headphones on or earbuds while you're in it, when you're in public is dangerous and risky. And yeah, to an extent, it is. You're less aware of your surroundings, you're not able to hear footsteps and so on. So did this man just sneak up on you? Maybe, but then of course, how did he just vanish? That's not explainable by any mundane scenario. And I do say, it's rather a sad reflection on society itself. I guess it depends where you live, of course. I think if you live in New Hampshire, in a rural town, it's uh, much less likely to be dangerous, you know? There's very- New Hampshire is the second lowest crime of violent and non-violent crime, so pretty safe there. But even then, it depends on the town and the environment. Know your environment is probably the best advice to give there. Uh, but yeah, if you live in downtown Detroit and at midnight, maybe don't wear headphones if you're going out or just don't go out at night. Know your environment. But towards the fact that this is definitely supernatural, the man just completely evaporated. Was it a warning? Maybe he wanted you to be more safe and not wear, wear headphones all the time? It's conceivable. I think if a lot of spirits are around, most aren't evil. And most would probably want us to be safe. Type of a spiritual guardian angel, you could say. I'll chalk it up to the positive side there. <laughs> and now time for the story of the day. An old man lived in the village. He was one of the most unfortunate people in the world. The whole village was tired of him. He was always gloomy. He constantly complained and was always in a bad mood. The longer he lived, the more bile he was becoming, and the more poisonous were his words. People avoided him because his misfortune became contagious. It was even unnatural and insulting to be happy next to him. He created the feeling of unhappiness in others. But one day, when he turned 80 years old, an incredible thing happened. Instantly, everyone started hearing the rumor. The old man is happy today. He doesn't complain about anything, smiles, and even his face is freshened up. The whole village gathered together. The old man was asked, What happened to you? Nothing special. 80 years I've been chasing happiness, and it was useless. And then I decided to live without happiness, and just enjoy life. That's why I'm happy now. So the moral of this story is, don't chase happiness. Just be happy. Attune your mind to enjoy the silver linings of whatever situation you're in. Because life probably could get worse, and it can get better. So strive for the best, but enjoy where you're at now, if at all possible. Case notes are file 989, The Time Resetting Train. So it is easy enough to lose track of time or lose track of your surroundings if you're just browsing on your phone on a train. I've done it a few times where I was taking the metro in Montreal. You know, you don't really remember where your stop is at, or uh, you just think you're at a stop and it's not quite the right one. So the first part of the story I don't think is necessarily a glitch, but the second part, where you clearly saw the, the name of the stop, we're ready to leave, and yeah, okay, this isn't it. So I was just mind befuddled. But then it happened again. It was like a time reset entirely. You felt the train move, it obviously did, per your story. So if this was a space-time anomaly, I always wonder, did everyone else experience it as well? And did they just pretend not to? Or not wanting to seem crazy, they just all acted like, yeah, this is normal, you know, nothing weird happening. <laughs> I'm not crazy. It does make me wonder, honestly. I think a lot of glitches happen to multiple people at the same time when in public. It's just that no one really wants to be the one to say, yeah, something weird happened, guys. We can all acknowledge it. Nah, let's just be quiet instead. Nothing weird happened. Case notes are file 990. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Sometimes the mind can fool itself into only seeing what it expects to see, what it wants to see. We have an advanced algorithm that's constantly filtering reality and processing it in a way where we don't necessarily observe reality. We just observe what our mind is able to render of it. Now, it doesn't mean objective reality doesn't exist. It does, in my opinion, but it's hard to get to it. So, was that what happened here? Your mind simply expected not to see a mirror, and so it didn't render it for you? I don't know. It seems like too great of a mind error, I guess you could say. I think it's certainly possible that you were simply peering into a different universe, one where your roommate did leave and took the mirror with her. That is possibly the most likely explanation. <laughs> Dave fell off and I forgot to bring him back on board. He's okay now. 
But yeah, it's a very sad and dark universe. One where you're not able to see your entire body naked. That's just sad. Case notes for the creepy file, number 80. Stalked in an Ohio State Park. So I would say, if this man was just camping and didn't want to intend you guys harm or, or fear or anxiety or anything, he definitely went about it the wrong way, especially after leaving the trail and spotting you two. Clearly he was observing you because he knew who you were, given the stare. So my gut is, he didn't intend you harm. Um, there's a lot of people that camp in state parks or national parks, they're homeless, so they may not be all there mentally, or, you know, using other substances to help with uh, depression. But, I don't necessarily think he was evil, out to get you. The stare is weird though, but it may just be because his mind wasn't all there, I don't know if it was necessarily malicious intent, trying to scare you. But yeah, it's definitely something to concern yourself with if you go to a state park, or more notably a state forest, because you can actually just camp in a forest for, I think, 14 days at a time, and then you only have to uh, move like 25 miles in any direction, and then you can repeat it. It's free. In a state park, it's more regulated, but in a forest, not as much. So just, you know, it doesn't mean you're going to be stalked and haunted or preyed upon by other humans if you go there, but just probably best to take protection if you can, in my opinion. Always better to be safe than sorry. And now time for the story of the day. Once upon a time, in a small village, there lived a kind-hearted farmer named Jack. He lived a simple life, but he was known for his honesty and integrity. Jack's reputation was so good that people from far and wide would come to see him to settle their disputes. One day, a wealthy merchant came to Jack's village and set up a market. The merchant was a cunning man and would often cheat the villagers by selling them goods of low quality at high prices. Jack was disgusted by the merchant's actions and he decided to do something about it. The next day, Jack went to the market and challenged the merchant to a deal. He said, Sir, I will buy all the goods you have in your market but I want you to be fair with the prices. The merchant, thinking that Jack was a simple farmer, agreed to the deal. However, when it came time to pay, Jack pulled out a bag filled with gold coins and paid the exact price for each item. The merchant was shocked and asked, How did you get so much money? Jack replied, I may be a farmer, but I have always lived by the moral that honesty is the best policy. I've been saving up my hard-earned money for a long time and have never cheated or taken advantage of anyone. The merchant was ashamed by his actions, and asked for Jack's forgiveness. Jack did forgive him, and the merchant left the village a changed man. From that day on, he started to treat the villagers fairly, and became known as an honest merchant. So the moral of this story is pretty straightforward, but that I think long term, honesty and integrity will guide you much further than to cheat. Yeah, you may get ahead temporarily if you do. It's the whole, uh, path of the dark side. You get more power, but eventually it destroys you. It's better to be good and honest. At least that's how I live my life. And as you can see here, these are my pull-ups right now. The most I can do is 10. Well, maybe I had one more in the tank, I think, so 11. The most I've ever been able to do in my life was 20. That was back in Canada when I had a home gym. Starting to work up to a new one now, and my goal this year is to hit 20 pull-ups again, in a row. Trying to keep my form very clean, as you can see, and uh, yeah. Just wanted to show you guys and leave a record here. This is my goal. 20 pull-ups this year, in a row. Let's do it. Case notes for file 991. All of my coworkers randomly despawned. My guess, you suffered from random death for some reason. People are just randomly dying these days. Or it could just be an accident in the warehouse itself. Whatever the reason, I think you randomly died, and then your soul was zipping across to a new universe. But in that space between death, transportation to the new universe, there's a gap between it. It may be related to how distant the new universe is, is going to be. Maybe you die in most universes near nearby, so the one you have to occupy in quantum immortality is far away, because there's so many copies, eventually there is one where you don't die for whatever reason. You know, if it's a cause that just happens like through genetics, where it's a genetic cancer, for an example. Maybe in almost every universe you do die from that. But there's still thousands, if not millions or billions, because there's so many copies of universes out there, it's hard to describe. So there's still plenty where you aren't dead, they just may be far away. And I think in those cases, there's a buffer period 
where a temporary server has to be created that has no people in it, just the copied physical matter. And that's where you inhabit until your soul finishes the move over. Think of copying data to a uh, USB drive. It depends on the size and also how far of a distance you're, you have to bring the data. There's still a lag in transportation. You copy it to the thumb drive and then you still have to bring it to the other computer. I think it's very similar to that, as a simple analogy. And you're definitely not alone in this. There's plenty of people reporting unoccupied servers. Worlds where they just can't find anyone. And colors are muted, sounds are muted, Every just everything doesn't quite feel right because it isn't. You aren't in the real world. You're in a facsimile, temporarily, during the transition. I do wonder if you've noticed anything unusual in the behavior of other people or if things are out of place after this event. That would be a sign, a clear sign that you are in a new universe. Especially if you're very far away from your original one, there would be presumably more difference. Case notes are file 992, the mysterious case of the missing tamale. So my first thought here was similar to other commenters in the thread, in that you may just have been eating on autopilot, and sometimes we do that. We do a lot of things on autopilot, obviously. We don't really think about eating, we don't really think about breathing or swallowing or any of that automatic actions, functions. Now this would fit if there was a wrapper for the second one, but in the comments you specify that there was no tinfoil anywhere, not in the trash, nowhere, so if you did autopilot eat it, there would still be the wrapper for it, and likewise your dog didn't, because you would have the tinfoil strewn about the entire floor like debris from a plane crash. I may have some experience in that regard. <laughs> Mr. Ben just eats anything, I have to keep it closely guarded. So if it wasn't autopilot, this would probably just be a classic case of DOP, disappearing object phenomena. It doesn't seem to affect food very often, but there is one other account, fairly recently, I think maybe a month ago I read, where the person was eating food at the kitchen table that their aunt had just made for them, and they ate it, the plate was empty, they looked away, and then they looked back and it was full again. I think they were tacos or burritos or something like that, maybe quesadillas. Yeah, quesadillas I think it was. Anyways, they kept eating it, looking away, and they were replenishing th themselves on the plate, like a <laughs> Harry Potter elves magic making food appear if the food was vanishing from their stomach, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't, because you would feel that. You would feel being full and then not full, you know, that's an obvious sensation difference. So then the only thing I can speculate is that in different copies of different universes for that person, the person there was going to eat the quesadillas, and for them it just vanished. So I think... In this case, you were on the receiving end of a glitch like this, where the food was disappearing for you, and maybe in a different universe, a copy of you there was receiving extra tamales. So they had three instead of two. Lucky them, huh? <laughs> you suffered a great loss, I must admit. And now time for the story of the day. Once upon a time, a group of ants worked tirelessly every day to collect food for their colony. One lazy grasshopper spent his day singing and dancing instead. When winter arrived... The ants were prepared with plenty of food stored away. The grasshopper, on the other hand, had nothing. This one's very short, but I think it's very potent too. It simply signifies that hard work pays off. We all exist in reality, and we all have to produce for ourselves. Obviously, we need to care for each other, but, but it's a cooperative, right? We need to produce and fend for ourselves in some respects, and earn our keep, I guess is the best way to say it. So in short, if you want something, go out and work for it. It feels better that way anyways. Case notes are file 993. In theaters, the repeating pattern of life, the repeating pattern of life, is very accurate. I'd like you all to imagine a ocean, but one that is perfectly still. No ripples at all, no waves. Now imagine ripples start forming, small oscillations in the field of the ocean. These ripples, in various formats and sequences and oscillations, represent energy and mass in the universe. Now, the field of life, the universe's fields, it used to be thought sort of in a sense of an ether out there. It's not quite like that. But these fields of life permeate everywhere, and they're in various formats. The EM field, the Higgs boson field that provides mass, basically resistance through movement of the universe itself. Unless you're a massless particle, but I don't want to get too deep into the physics. Needless to say, life is a giant ocean, and mass and energy in it are ripples in that ocean. Now, presumably given that, if we die, our physical mass is still there, rippling away. But the energy too, doesn't just dissipate, in my opinion. 
I think it leaves an imprint in that spot. And maybe that imprint can travel a bit, but generally speaking, it's a repeating pattern of life. And it doesn't just fade away instantly, I think it takes time. And I think it can persist for a long amount of time if there's energy it can siphon away, and then it can endure for a long time, repeating perhaps the last events or most notable events, maybe in this person's life, or these people, this couple. Their moment in a theater, maybe decades ago, I don't know how old the theater is, was a key moment in their life and they're repeating it, a kind of echo in time. But yes, I think eventually it'll fade away and their story will conclude, at least in this universe, because there's also quantum immortality. So again, I think it's just an imprint. It's not their entire soul that's left behind. It's just a little fragment of it, a little droplet in the ocean. It still creates waves, just not a lot. And eventually, the ocean will return back to its standard entropy state, and they'll be gone, again, for us. They'll still be out there, dating away in other universes. Case notes are file 994. Elevator returns in full glitch force. Well, it's been a while since we got an elevator glitch, a few months at least. There's two possibilities. You could have witnessed the astral projection of someone else. And we know astral projections can interact with the physical world, so entering a elevator, sure, why not? The other possibility is just a classic DOP, and that's affecting an actual human being, which there are plenty of reports of that happening too. And it's almost always out of sight. It's very, very rare. Maybe I've read two stories where someone is actually disappearing in front of someone else. It's almost always when out of view. The more energy is interacting with any given object or person, the less likely they are to fade away. Which I think is why doors and elevators are often involved in these kinds of stories. Blocking a view. A kind of elevator Schrodinger's cat. No radioactive particles involved at this time which is always lovely. I don't want elevators with radioactive decay. Bad idea. And now time for the story of the day. Once, there was a fox who saw a bunch of grapes hanging from a vine. The fox, being hungry, tried to jump and grab them, but he couldn't reach. After several attempts, he gave up and walked away, saying to himself, those grapes were probably sour anyway. The moral of the story is that sometimes, when we can't achieve something, we tend to downplay its value to feel better. Instead, we should learn to accept our limitations and try to improve ourselves to achieve our goals. Well, I have to definitely agree with this one. And it reminds me of many cases where people approach someone else, ask them out, and then when they get rejected, they act like they weren't even attracted to the person to begin with. But that doesn't make any sense. Why would you approach them if you weren't? We can play tricks on our own minds. We can fool ourselves into thinking we're the victim. But no. We should know who we are, where we stand, and if we want even better in life, then... Let's earn it. Let's improve ourselves. Let's be better people. It's not just about lifting more weight or having more money or anything like that. Those It's just classic DOP. You put the shoes in the box. They dematerialized from the box. That already happened. And they reappeared at your grandma's place. I always wonder why, when objects reappear, is it in such specific locations? If not directly tied to you, to a close family member... In this case, your grandma. But yeah, it really isn't always clear why these objects just disappear. Some objects in specific. For me, just tennis balls. Why tennis balls? And why do they sometimes reappear? It really isn't clear. These places have relevance to the owner that had them before. It still belongs to you. Seemingly, they could reappear anywhere. But it's always in these specific places. Why? It's either spirits or very advanced programming. Case notes for the bonus file. Say hello to the Grim Reaper. So, given the noises ceased as soon as your father was woken from his slumber, my guess is it was related to his subconscious, perhaps manifesting the inner stress and chaos that he was feeling given the diagnoses. And by the way, I'm very sorry to hear about this. Even though medical uh, technology is very advanced now, I think your father will be okay. It's still incredibly stressful to deal with, no matter what. For him, for the whole family. It's not something I would wish on my worst enemy. One thing I do want to mention, in case it offers any comfort. I fully believe in quantum immortality, which, if you don't know, is where the soul will move between universes in the great multiverse if the body was inhabiting died. It will just jump to a different one in a different universe. And so, even if the worst happens to your dad in this universe, he will continue living on in other universes where the cancer didn't get him. Now, again, you know, I think medical technology is, is very advanced, so there's a great chance that your father will persist in this universe for a long time. But 
In the off chance that he doesn't, there is still hope. You may not be able to interact with him directly anymore, but he will still be out there. And in fact, for him, he won't even realize that he's in a different universe. Most people don't. Unless he spot those anomalies, sometimes universes are a bit different. And unless you have all this knowledge that we have here in this glitch community, you won't really know. Even if you spot the anomalies, you just think, oh, I must be going crazy. <laughs> or you'll just discount them in it entirely because they're often very small. Maybe uh, you keep pens by your desk and they're usually blue, but now they're red. Or something so mundane and trivial like that you wouldn't even think to think about it. One way or another, it'll be okay. Thanks for sharing the story though. It must have been hard to type that. And now for the story of the day. Once upon a time, there was a farmer who lived in a small village. He was a hard-working man and spent most of his time tending to his crops and animals. One day, the farmer came across a small, injured bird on the side of the road. Feeling sorry for the bird, he took it home and nursed it back to health. After a few weeks, the bird had fully recovered and was able to fly again. The farmer, however, didn't want to let the bird go. He had grown fond of it and enjoyed having it around. The bird, on the other hand, was unhappy being cooped up in a cage all day. One day, the farmer had a change of heart. He realized that it was selfish of him to keep the bird captive, just because he enjoyed its company. He decided to set the bird free, even though he knew that he would miss it terribly. The moral of the story is that, sometimes, we have to make difficult decisions for the good of others. It may be hard to let go of something that we love, but if it's the right thing to do, we should do it. In the end, Doing what's right will bring us more happiness than holding on to something that doesn't belong to us. It's that whole uh, adage of, if you truly love someone, let them be free. Yeah, maybe they'll come back to I, uh, The bird may have come back to the farmer at some point just to say hello. We don't own other people and often don't really consider them enough. It's all down to empathy. Highly valued and in short supply these days. Like the video, subscribe, hit the bell, good stuff. Kinetic Symphony signing off.